Hello and welcome. It's a bright and sunny afternoon here at the Oman Cricket Academy. It's the penultimate day of all the action in the ACC Men's Premier Cup 2024. What a lovely tournament this has been and it all boils down to the third place playoff between Nepal and Hong Kong, China. Remember, both these teams will be eyeing a spot in the Emerging Teams Asia Cup later this year. Lots to play for. Who will progress ahead and who will finish third? Nepal taking on Hong Kong, China. And just the right time to go down to the centre, Andrew Leonard with both the captains for the all-important toss. OK, time for the toss. Third place playoff here at the ACC Premier Cup and a spot at the ACC Emerging Teams Cup on the line. It's Nepal taking on Hong Kong. Captains and match referee alongside me, Rohit Pedal, Nizakat Khan and Mr Salim Shahid. Our ACC match ref, Rohit, give the coin a toss. Tails. Tails is the call. It comes down as a head. Rohit, you won the toss. What are you going to do, please, and why? Uh, we'll bat first, uh, especially looking at this condition. I think uh, it will remain same uh, or slower in uh, second inning. So we'll bat and utilize it. How have you digested yesterday's game? Obviously disappointed, but what were the reflections amongst the team at the end of the day? Yeah, absolutely. It was very um, hard to di digest, especially. Uh, disappointment was there, uh, but still, uh, this is sports. Uh, it teaches you about failures. And yeah, we need to accept it and yeah, move forward because uh, today's game is also very important for us. So yeah, we are looking forward to today's game. Why is today's game so important? That, that spot at the ACC Emerging Teams Cup somewhere you were last year, but probably more than that, you want to finish with a win and on a high. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, the way we started this tournament and one game uh, and we, we are out of this uh, uh, list. And then again, we have an opportunity to prove ourselves uh, where we stand. And yeah, today's game is equally important for that ACC Emerging Cup also. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. Okay, final question. Same team or any changes? Uh, we're playing with the same team. Okay, Rohit, best of luck. Let's throw it. Pedal, choosing to bat first, interestingly. Nizakat, what would you have done, honestly, now? We would have liked to bowl first on this wicket. We wanted to chase. Uh, so, yeah, you know, the toss was in our favour now. thought you were brilliant yesterday, the way in which you fought, but you just didn't have enough runs on the board. It will be different today. What would you like to try and restrict Nepal to? Well, you know, these wickets are getting slower and slower, you know, as much as possible, you know, as low. Uh, I think under 140, that's, this will be our target. But, you know, they have a very good batting side as well, so we have to make sure we have to ball nuts out, yeah. OK, any changes to your team? Just the two spinners yesterday, have you changed anything about? No, we have one change, so Martin Kutsia is out because of his injury, yeah. and Adit Koravar is in. OK, great, lovely to see you. Very best of luck as always. OK, that's the news from the toss. Nepal, they've won the toss. They're going to have a bat first. Well, the Rhinos missed out with the bat yesterday and they'll want to make amends and make the most of it as the openers will be keen to get some runs on the board. Nepal goes unchanged in this game. Rohit Kumar Paudel, he's short of runs. He'll want to get some runs too before this tournament comes to an end. Kushal Burtel has shown flashes of brilliance. Sandeep Chora was so impressive yesterday morning. Gulshan Kumar Jha has turned out to be a very fine all-rounder. Abhinash Bora, the death over specialist and Mr. Dependable Singh Iri, Lalit Rajamanshi. Kushal Malla, Mohamed Asif Sheikh, Karan Kesi and Sumpal Kami comprise the 11. One change here for Hong Kong, China. Martin Kotsi misses out and Adit Goravara comes in. Otherwise, it's the same side. Nizakat Khan, the captain. Anshuman Rat will need some runs. Babar Hayat to look good for his 30-odd yesterday. Ezan Khan, Yasim Murtaza, Dishan Ali, the wicketkeeper. Nasrullah Rana, Ishan Khan, Ashush Ai, Shukla, Atik, Rehman, Iqbal. So, both these sides have had a fair share of ups and downs, but it's Nepal who's looked good all through, only to miss out yesterday in that semi-final clash against UAE. Well, that's the wicket on offer, and it's a little breezy as well, but it's equally hot, and I must say it's oppressive heat here at the Oman Cricket Academy. Just the right time to welcome my co-commentator, Pranav Mehta. Pranav, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mikhail. What an incredible day. Two teams that wouldn't have wanted to be in this match are here at this match, but all's not lost. Still that prime position. ACC Emerging Cup, who is it going to be, Nepal or Hong Kong, China? They would want to get their foot right. Yes, things haven't been in their favour, but it's, it's not yet late. And it's important for Nepal to start well. Burtel and Asif Sheikh have the form going on their side. They'll need to just about stitch a partnership up front because when they do that, Nepal looks a completely different side with Rohit coming in at three and then the all-rounders and the specialists in Jora and Kushal Malla as well. I want to see both these openers spend more time in the middle and utilize the first six overs with great responsibility. 
Well, Nepal losing out to UAE yesterday. The empires for this particular game, the on-field empires, Mohammad Morshad Ali Khan. He's at the bowler's end and giving him company. At the far end is... Uh, yeah, that's Morshad Ali Khan. He's had a fine tournament so far. He's been brilliant and so have all the empires. And at the square leg, it will be Kalidas Viswanathan, another very fine personality and a very good empire as well. The TV empire will be Tariq Rashid. The fourth empire will be Rahul Asher and the match referee Salim Javid. You'd need to show intent. Kushal Burtel, strike rate 119. That average is not that impressive in this tournament. And what would have been important is some intent, some free-flowing intent, some freedom. And that's what they would want to exercise. Along with him, it is Mohamed Asaf Sheikh. Loves to play his shots. Has that strike rate of 124, which is not doing justice to his talent at the moment. Mikel would want to see more of those six overs, 50, 55 kind of starts. Oh, quite certainly, yes. Ashish Shukla to open the bowling. Got a wicket of the very first delivery yesterday against Oman, where he got Prajapati out very first ball in their innings. You're all set to, for play. And as you pointed out, Pranav, yes, you want to see more of that intent coming in particularly by the opening batters. Here we go. Look at that for shape. Yet again, beats the bat first up. This is a very good delivery to begin proceedings. Generally, in this kind of format, what you want is you want, even if you go down, you want to go down swinging. And that's where I want Nepalese batters to be swinging at the ball rather than just poking at it. So often you have seen that, you know, when you're swinging the bat, the, even the outside edges might fly over the slips. And that's what you got from the intent of Sevag. Want something similar from these batters. Edged. And is that a wicket? Yes, it is. A delivery later though. But Shukla strikes once again. Burtel has to depart without scoring. Nepal's woes continue in the top order. As Hong Kong China strike very early in this innings. What an incredible delivery from Ayu Shukla. He's known for picking up wickets early and he's just continuing to do that here at the Oman Cricket Academy. Enjoying those lovely outswingers and he swings the ball really late. Burtel looking to poke at one just outside the off stump. And he is going to be departing without troubling the scorers here. Zero for one Nepal as Burtel departs for zero. Oh, this is a change in the batting order. Promotion here for Sompal Kami and what a responsibility he's been entrusted with. Has been asked to come in at number three in moving conditions. He's played a couple of games, missed out on one. And now he's been given the responsibility of making full use of the power play. What a contest here. Sompal Kami versus Ayush Shukla. And oh... These are going to be anxious moments for him. You just don't want to be poking. When the ball's moving, it's greater if you're slashing. On this occasion, yes, As Shukla loves, loves to shape the ball and loves to shape the ball late. And celebrations for Hong Kong China really early into this game. Oh, that's aerial. That's in the air. And will it be taken? Not really. Very lucky there, Sompal Kami. Gets the leading edge. Yes and a no. Total confusion in the middle. For a moment, it looked like Babar Hayat was getting underneath that one. It could have easily been wicket number two. Things are not working. Things certainly not working for Nepal at the moment. Ayush Shukla, one of those experienced campaigners for Hong Kong, China. And he's standing up tall. Can he continue doing it?
I'll tell you what, Nepal's problems lie right on top. Now this is Burtel once again finding a faint edge. And what we realize, this is his third duck in the tournament and a consecutive one as well. He's barely lasted deliveries, three consecutive ducks. Seriously compounding to their problems on top. Something the think tank will want to address. Much better this time by Asif Sheikh. What a start for Shukla. Yet again, he takes the wicket in the very first over. It's one for one. Atik to bowl the second. Pranav problems here for Nepal. They'll have to find a solution quickly. What I feel is that Nep this Nepali side is a very good match, very good fit for a 50 over format. They like to fend their way initially. They need to be more free flowing. And somebody who moves the ball around, Atik Ikbal. Every time that the ball has been moving, they've been trouble. Uh, this time it's edged, but it'll go towards the third region and it'll go for a four as well. Not the most convincing of shot from Sompal pa Kami, but he fetches four. First boundary here for Nepal. Finally, it runs runs on offer. They'll take it in any way possible. Might be out the outside edge. Interesting to understand the plan behind sending Sompal Kami at number three. And uh, this will make for an interesting discussion as well. Rohit Powdell is short of runs. Ideally, he should have come in. Sompal Kami being sent up. Looks to go, Ariel. This time again, two fielders coming underneath. It will just fall ahead of them. Yet again, Sompal Kami does not quite hit a convincing shot. Manages to get two. I don't mind, Mikhail. I don't mind the intent of Sompal Kami. Yes, nothing from the middle of the bat, but runs starting to flow. Just a boundary prior to this delivery of the outside edge but wouldn't mind in this format T20 ever so unforgiving Sompal Kami so far has got 7 and 4 he's been promoted at number 3 Rohit Pardal will maybe just come later down the order but I'm just trying to understand the plan and reason behind it if this is a stopgap arrangement or this is the plan forward and Situations like this to make use of the power play. The conditions are conducive to bowling. Tricky conditions, Pranav. It's the quality in the air, just short of third. He's living and he's living dangerously, Sompal Kami. Difficult conditions, yes, but. This is what, he, what has been an offer from these op opening strikers of Hong Kong, China. They've picked up wickets early, not just against Nepal, but against most of the sides. They love to move the ball, and that's something that is technically available with them. Right, Nepal needs to find a move on from here. It's Kami, Asif, or anybody in the middle. They'll have to make full use of that power play. Yesterday as well, they got stuck in the power plays and never bailed themselves out of that situation. Asif on strike. Little tentative. Would want Nepal to be one of those 200, 180 type of sides. At the moment, they are looking for 150, 160 and looking to keep it competitive. I'd rather just beg to differ with the point of them being a 50 over side because they've won four games in a row in this T20 tournament and they just had one bad outing against UAE. Nicely played. Just falls short of the field at 
mid-wicket. And coming back to the point, they are a quality T20 side. But I just get the impression they are a different side at home when they're playing a T20 international. And they are a different side when they're traveling. Maybe that's something they would like to look at. But otherwise, they have a lot of quality. And they've shown it that they are one of the best T20 sides in associate and international cricket. I have a point here to make, which I'm going to probably make it in the next over. Cut. Cut hard. Sompal Kami. He's making things happen here for Nepal. He's come here with an intent and he's living dangerously. And Nepal wouldn't mind that as they accumulate another boundary to their name. Two overs done. 15 for one, Nepal. That was short and wide. What is in the air as well. Desperate dive at backward point. But that was fiercely struck. This would have been another great catch. Oh, just felt he went the wrong way. Nevertheless, much needed runs. The promotion is working right now here for Nepal. And if this pays off, it will work as a good move. If it does not, it may just sound a little bizarre. That's how sport is. Coming back to my point, Mikhail, what my point is that even if you look at the league stages, where did Nepal excel? Where did they outclass the, their opponents? Right in the middle order. When the Pendra Singh Airy comes into... Driven, driven firmly. When the Pendra Singh Airy and the middle order, lower middle order, looks to take on to the attack, it's not right at the top. Whereas when you see Oman, majority of the matches in the top order, you see the the batting order taking it out of the opponent. Totally agree with your point there. The start decides the end. Nepal have been reliant on Irie's brilliance with bat ball in the field. The fact that he walked away with two player of the match awards shows his impact as well. Agreed. That's why at the start we did mention a little bit of more responsibility and accountability from the top order will ease things for Nepal. A packed offside, five on the off inside the circle, two on the on inside, one at mid wicket and shot fine. Shukla is bowling well. And that's why the first six overs, you need to mix caution with aggression. My, my primary point being, Mikhail, is that you need to take some difficult calls. Oman w was a very settled side with Pratika Thavle and uh, the other opener. And then they brought in Nasim Khushi to add that impact. And look how it has paid off in this tournament. It was not prior to this tournament that he was opening consistently. So you need to take those difficult calls and those difficult calls great bring you great results. This time again, not quite sure. He's got underneath that one. It'll be wicket number two. Sompal Kami stay in the middle. He's lasted only seven deliveries. The plan has backfired. Nepal lose their second. Ayush strikes for the second time. What a wicket. What a wicket. Ayush, he's continuing to pick up wickets here for Hong Kong, China. And an incredible short delivery. No chance whatsoever for Sompal Kami. He's looking to throw a bat at almost everything. And on this occasion, he's going to be departing back. 16 for 2 Nepal as Sompal Kami departs. Captain Rohit Pordel makes his way to the middle. Team in dire straits. 16 for 2 in the third over. He's had a quiet tournament as well. Strike rate of 107. 92 runs in the four, five outings he's had. I'll tell you what, he walks in at a time where Nepal need his presence. But what a start, Ayush Shukla. Two wickets for him in nine deliveries. What an incredible delivery. Need Rohit to fire here. He's one of the premium players. He's the captain. He needs to send that, set the trend here. And that's why when you look back at the change of having Sompal Kami at number three, I'm sure there was a reason, there was a plan behind it. And uh, just need to understand, is that the way forward or this was just a one-off arrangement done? 
to just about see whether Kami can be very effective in the first six overs. Off the mark is the captain of the single down to short third. Mikhail, the point being that in this power play, you just have two fielders outside the circle. And you might be a brilliant batter, you might drive the ball well, you might flick the ball well, but you want a batter who can take the aerial route, at least one of the two batters. And that's so important. That is something that has been missing right at the top. Yes, we know that Asif Sheikh is a brilliant striker, he can go all guns blazing, but he's not been able to do it consistently for Nepal. And that's where the worries come in. And there's extra bit of pressure on Koshal Burtel or probably Rohit Padel as well. Yes, Mohamed Asif Sheikh is of course a very fine batter. Clearly more conventional as well in the middle. Three gone at 17 for two. Atik to continue into his second. Well, Nepal will need a partnership here. And they'll need Captain and Asif to just about get going. Nepal has been off to a disastrous start. First, it was the outside edge poking at it. And on the second occasion, too much of an intent. You see the two extremes. Either not going anywhere or going too much. And no chance whatsoever. Oh yes. Sompal Kami shot. Well, he was all over it. It's just not in position to get to a stage where he could tee that off over mid-wicket. I, I, I have an example. Prior to this tournament, Oman was playing Namibia. And if you see the initial games, they were all 120-odd games, where Oman was opening with Pratik and Kashyap. Big, big, big expensive swing and a miss. Rohit, just not in the equation at the moment. And that's where Oman brought in Naseem Khushi into the mix of things. Yes, he didn't fire immediately, but look at what he's done in this tournament. Just don't want to see your top order batters playing such kind of shots. Well, yesterday during presentation, we'll talk about that after this delivery. Much better. Good delivery. Watchfully played. Alishan Sharafu, the player of the match from UAE's game against uh, Nepal, stated that the pitch was a little tricky. And it seems to be tricky this afternoon as well. Just not coming onto the bat the way the bowler, the batsman would have liked it to. Here again, once you see Rohit trying to manufacture a shot by dancing down the track. The surface and a gale of easterly winds as well blowing, blowing from that end. Just about adding. Oh, this could be close. And in the process, on the overthrow, they run a single. I'm, I'm a very firm believer that batters make bowlers. Good batters can make very good bowlers look very ordinary. Oh, it was pretty close. It could well have been a goner. A better throw was required there. At the moment, even if you see the first wicket that fell, it was Kushal Burdel who didn't get to the pitch of the ball. As an opener, you want to counter that swing. Flicked. Well, there is protection in the deep. 
and it will be a single. Four was gone. We'll come back to our discussion. Twenty-one for two, Nepal. So, Mikhail, coming back to our point, my coach used to often say that every time that a player would get out and walk out and say, oh, that was a beautiful ball, bowl to me, he would tell the batter that you're a batsman because you need to play those beautiful balls. If those could be countered by others, they would be called as batters. So much on action. Ayush has begun well. What a shot. Breaks the shackles here. Roy Portal, the captain comes to the fore. Nepal needs more of this. That was a poor delivery. Incredible. Rohit Bottle finally coming to the party. Shot and executing right over, cover, right over point. What an incredible strike. Never look to keep it down and this is exactly what Nepal requires. Rohit Bottle, the captain, getting things right here on this occasion. That should have been put off as well, put away rather. But that will be a free hit now. No ball by Ayush Shukla. Just the delivery Rohit Padal needs. They need to unleash a barrage of hits in the middle. Nepal has gone quiet, so has Rohit Padal. They need some assistance. They haven't got the right foot forward in this game. And what a wonderful strike from the bat of Rohit Padal. Was watchful. Makes room for himself. Fuller delivery outside of slash for another boundary. Rohit Padel is looking good in the middle. Nepal are finding a move on. Solid. Incredibly brilliant from the bat of Rohit Padel. When you can play shots like that, you just don't need to shy away from a challenge. He's found the better of Ayush Shukla. In his third over, he's leaking runs here. It was a good delivery to start off with. He was looking for that wide Yorker, with, but with no protection in the deep on the offside. Rohit Padal looking to give it some air. And what an incredible strike from Rohit Padal. Sensible cricket, they steal a single. If Rohit Padel is playing these kinds of shots, I wonder what was the reason or need to promote Sompal Kami at number three. Rohit is the right candidate. But of course, the think tank came in with different plans, something new, a little bit of experimentation. And that's fair as well. 32 for two in the fifth. Eleven of the over so far, two to go. Goes aerial, fielder coming underneath, should be taken, comfortable catch. Captain Nizakat Khan pouches it, Asif Sheikh departs. He's had a terrible outing, 5-11 for him. Nepal lose their third, Hong Kong, China all over the Rhinos. 
just didn't go anywhere. He was looking for a big one, looking to replicate his captain's shot. On this occasion, getting the bigger part of the bat right over the handle. And it is being a terrific outing for Asaf Sheikh as he departs for 5 of 11. You'll need to forget this. 32 for 3, Nepal. Problems plenty here for Nepal. Yesterday's hero Sandeep Jora makes his way to the middle. At the stroke of 50, departed against UAE but played a very valiant innings, dropping anchor. Strike at a 122 and he's not new to the situation. Once again, he needs to bail his team out of trouble and get the runs as well. Nepal three down within the first five overs. Both the openers back in the dugout. Captain Rohit Paudel in the middle. Cut away. Very good fielding as well. It's going to be a teaser for the fielder. And this has been a valiant effort at a point. Certainly saved a run over there. Three runs to end the over. Sandeep gets off the mark. He'll retain strike. Five gone. It's 35 for three. All right, unlock cricket. Download the ACC app. Visit a site, asiancricket.org. You can also do that on your iOS and Android phones and get a lowdown on everything around Asian cricket and your favorite players. We're coming to you live from the Oman Cricket Academy. It's the penultimate day of the Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. Nepal taking on Hong Kong. It's the third place playoff and both teams will be eyeing a spot in the emerging teams Asia Cup later this year. This has been a very disciplined bowling performance here by Hong Kong, China. It was a win-win at the toss. Nepal wanted to bat, Hong Kong wanted to bowl. And Nizakat Khan will be happy. Change in voices. Mudassar Ali Qureshi joins me. Mudassar, what a start here for Hong Kong, China. Very good afternoon, Mikhail, and good afternoon to all of our viewers. Windy conditions, not helping the cause of Nepal. The only positive I could see is Rohit looking good out there in the middle. All just moving away from Sandeep. So Trouble times for Nepal. Looking good is Hong Kong, China. And full marks should be given to the two fast bowlers of Hong Kong, China. The way they are extracting the conditions in their favor quite well. Atik and Ayush. Unable to negotiate that extra swing from the pace bowlers of Hong Kong, China. story remains the same for Nepal. The top order struggle continues as we have seen the likes of Asif Burtal back in the hut. It was the change of the top order, sending Sompal Kami, which backfired Nepal. I think it, it, has must, uh, it must have something to do with that, to break the jinx where Rohit was struggling at one down position. So just change that number, get him at number two. But the fact remains that at some point Rohit has to be coming back at number three because that's his best position. You can't be having Sompal at number three. This was clearly an experimentation. 
maybe just to find somebody like a burtel kind of a batter who can take the attack to the opposition a like to like batter because after shake is more cultural and more conventional i look at it that way coming into the right hand batter loud appeal not interested says kalidas so leg by good to see he has that knack of moving the ball both the ways this time sharply coming into sandeep now the list good to see rohit just about getting into his groove so important for nepal he stays and scores they look a different side there's a lot of depth in this nepal batting mamad asif shake for the last batter to depart tap and run finding it hard to get those boundaries sensible piece of batting rotate the strike a good start provided by these two fast bowlers for hong kong china and nepal the end of power play 37 for the loss of 3 Six overs, thirty-seven for the loss of three, and the first change, Muhammad Ajaz. He was brilliant against Oman the previous day. Got those three big wickets. He has been exceptional with the ball. A true all-rounder to have in your side, Ajaz Khan. Five matches, eight wickets to his name. Economy on a bit higher side, eight point two. It will be interesting to see whether Nizakat Khan will opt to go with Nasrullah Rana, another exciting, talented all-rounder. And looking at the field, D. Fine leg, third man, short mid-wicket, point cover and mid-off inside the 30-yard circle. Using the risk, look at that effort put in by Anshuman Rath. Brilliant overall, excellent cricket. Hong Kong China have been sharp in the field. They've grabbed the opportunities, taken the catches, had some direct hits as well. Now, Mohammad Azaz Khan got three wickets yesterday. Just about sent a warning to Oman as well in their chase by striking every time he was introduced into the attack. He enjoys these conditions. Chipped in the air towards the mid-wicket region. Oh, he was brilliant. the previous day against oman but unfortunately good not got the support from the other end ball quite well but few overs going for plenty of runs not help the cause of hong kong china the likes of ehsan khan went wicketless they negotiated the spin of ehsan quite well oman batters smart cricket good to see the singles the runs coming by the strike being rotated nepal cannot get into that shell of theirs they have to keep finding ways to find the gaps and runs indeed and throughout this tournament we have seen the batters of nepal they were tested even against malaysia saudi arabia they had a tough time thanks to that good knock from gulshan jai and dipendra singh airi
smart piece of thinking not trying to hit hard the focus is on building up a partnership here rohit and sandeep sandeep good come back into this tournament got those 50 runs against uae but all focus will be on rohit podel the captain of nepal yeah it's how podel can anchor the innings now and the rest revolve around them good start here for hong kong china remember this is the fight for the third place playoff also an opportunity to take that flight later this year for the emerging teams asia cup one team will miss out from the four to have qualified oman and uae who will be the third between hong kong and nepal chipped away good cricket here couple of runs this partnership is key to nepal's total and of over number 7 it's 44 for 3 Seven overs, uh, forty-four for the loss of three, and it's time for the sideline interview. Andrew Leonard is out with someone special from Nepal dugout. Over to you, Andrew. Hey, great to have Monty Desai, the head coach of Nepal, alongside me. Monty, thanks for talking to me. Disappointment yesterday. Let's touch on that first. Very tough game. UAE played exceptionally well. Yes, they did. Actually, uh, they planned it well. They were prepared for what they wanted from power play to start with, and I think their fast bowlers did very well. How competitive is the associate game? For me, you know how much of, of this kind of cricket I cover. It's definitely better than it's ever been. No easy games anymore. Yeah, I mean, associate cricket, uh, there is a lot at stake. And every team, every players who are representing their countries, they know that. So, I mean, it's their careers. It's so much at stake, you know, the responsibility which they have and the pressure which they have to take. So, associate cricket definitely is a different league altogether. Yeah, it's cutthroat, isn't it? How have you got the boys back together for today's game? It's it's a huge match for Nepal. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have just reminded ourselves that uh, when we made a promise to ourselves last year, it was all about understanding what associate cricket is all about, and the, in the competition to always remember and deep dive into what is our identity, which is we want to compete, and uh, Nepal has been known for that. We never give up. You know, we want to remain in phases uh, in the battles which we talk about. So. Uh, it was just about testing their characters today and we were just taking this game as our finals yeah it really is a final acc emerging team uh, spot on the line and also the top 3 they'll advance to that but who knows could end up with a situation where this game could be worth even more than that how have you got that across to the boys and impressed the importance of ending this competition with a win what we have said it is that we never want to regret about our efforts that we put in on the on, in the game so if the rules change if there are more teams going to compete like you're mentioning uh, we want to be you know on the right side of it i think every game we take a lot of i mean we give every opportunity a lot of respect every game we give a lot of respect mm. and uh, we are on just constantly on the journey of building our brand okay what about what you have to look forward to a massive game that you're you're starting to fight back in here now the 50s just come up here in the 8th over paddle and jora building a nice part nice partnership west indies a coming to kathmandu and then a world cup the stuff of dreams for you and all the boys Yes, uh, you know, uh, finally it's shaping up well. You know, I wanted a number of games for us uh, before we go for the World Cup. So, this competition, of course, and now to go back home and play against West Indies A, which is pretty much looking like uh, around seven, eight players would be part of the the actual team. You know, I mean, I'm hearing that players like I don't want to name it anyways, <laughs> but you know, players who have represented the country are uh, big, players. big players who represent the country are going to be part of the A team. So, it's going to be highly competitive. 
Monty, just a word for the fans as we see a big appeal. That's going to be the wicket. It's the fourth one to go as it looks like it's the skipper, Roa Powdle, who's been trapped LBW. And Monty, we might just leave it there. I want to thank you for your time. We'll throw back up to the commentators. Thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Okay, Dan Devout, up, up to you, boys. A big, big wicket going down. Rohit Powdle, who was looking good. Pulling wicket to wicket. Slight movement, loud appeal, took his own time. The finger goes up. Man who was looking good departs Manning 21 of 19 with the help of two fours. Nepal are four wickets down, 50 on board. Kushal Malla, 47 runs in this tournament for him. He's got them at a strike rate of 138. Situation is different here. Team in a situation, in a spot. 50 for 4. It's been a little bit of a wobble here for Nepal. The top order has squandered an opportunity. Hong Kong, China have done well. They did the same against Oman yesterday. Take a look at that. Dismissal once again. Well, that uh, dismissal there. Kalidas Viswanathan. The slow dreaded finger coming up. Just well, that may have been going down, but it straightened. Off the mark is Malla. Good over here for Atikul. And for Hong Kong, China, he finishes the four with one for 26. Eight gone, it's 51 for four. Mohamed Ezaz Khan to bowl his second. Nepal need a partnership and runs. Malla and Jora in the middle. Edged. And that should go towards third for a single. Every run is important. Every run will be cheered by the spectators. Throughout this tournament, we have witnessed people coming in number and supporting. Nepal team, a left hand, right hand combination out there in the middle for Nepal. Can he be the rescue ranger, Sandeep? Riding high on confidence after that 50 runs against UAE. But looking good is Azaz with the ball in his hand. In the air, just falling away from that field at Square like Nasrullah Rana. Good job done. Hong Kong, China went on to lose the semi final against Oman, wherein Nepal lost to their arch rivals UAE. Fighting for the third spot. Nepal and Hong Kong, China. As of now, wicketless, Azaz. Cutter, change of pace, nicely done. Equally well kept by Zishan Ali.
extra pressure losing those quick wickets now clearly showing on malla but good captaincy going with medium fast bowlers we are into the ninth over still waiting for ehsan khan and the likes of murtaza to come and bowl those overs quick overs you also need to keep an eye on the time just losing his shape a good comeback by hong kong the way they started in this tournament especially after that loss against saudi arabia but a good comeback a strong comeback against malaysia you got to really compliment the efforts put in by the ground staff we've had uh, non stop cricket on two venues as many as 23 matches now 9 days of cricket they have been brilliant uh, the nepal crowd full of fervor and flavor uh, they totally enjoy their cricket and uh, irrespective of the situation they always find a way to share a smile and laugh going the outing out there for the spectators and the supporters of nepal smart thinking keeping towards that off stump of malla another tight over four back to back to back to back dot deliveries nine overs done nepal 53 for the loss of four and for the first time in this innings spin is being introduced yasim murtaza will bowl the 10th so deep mid wicket deep square leg long on long off and cover sweep and place shot third shot fine a backward point and shot covers completes good economy of 6.90 for him that's been the story for nepal this afternoon more of singles less of boundaries indeed losing those quick wickets forced on the back foot by the bowlers of hong kong china especially the power play are going in their favor lost three wickets for a score of 36 in at the end of power play nepal desperately need to the partnership here sandeep and malla well negotiated going down on one knee swept nicely towards the backward square leg region couple of runs smart piece of batting not trying to force on to the delivery timing has been impeccable in this short stay of malla for nepal there's depth in the batting but what they have missed in the last few games is the foundation on top that's why they say in t20 cricket you have to have that one top order batting staying for a long time so that others can revolve around him with us their batting concerns on top has just exposed their run scoring in the middle yes conditions have been a little tricky as well but this is an important game you want to get the third place qualify for the emerging teams asia cup happening later this year they have been the form side they won the first four league games they'll be eager to end it on a high as well there's a longer format or shorter format it's all about how you get that start having a horrible tournament with the bat is gurtel three back to back to back games without troubling the scorers he was back in the hut poor form with the bat for asif sheikh continues nicely managed quick eye deliveries so fine no chance for the fielder a much needed boundary a good looking shot four runs and more runs for nepal i'll tell you what he got into a little bit of a tangle they were playing it it was a maximum risk and maximum run shot as well fairly understandable does that well 
Much needed boundary here for Nepal. They'll need a couple more. The runs have dried in the middle. At the halfway stage, they haven't got many. Goes onto the back foot. Nicely managed. So some runs in this over for Nepal. So far, nine runs in five balls. And all of a sudden, you can see that energy the Nepal fans. Taking his own time, the left hand, right hand combination. Doing well as of now for Nepal. For dot delivery to end the over number 10. Half of the overs done in the first innings. Nepal 62 for the loss of four. It's time for the drinks break. That's the tail of the tape thus far for Nepal. 62 for four. Plenty to work with, but they'll need to finish strongly. I want 150 plus. And after, well, a bit of a nightmare for poor old Kushal Britell. Three consecutive ducks. Two silver ducks, if you will, from the second ball and one golden duck. Five balls he's lasted and yet to contribute a run in the last three games. It can be very tough at the top sometimes. Big surprise for me. Sampal Kami at three. Didn't get into it there with Monty Desai. But he's batted there four times in his career. And he's averaged about eight. Very strange for me. Can understand it in an ODI when you've time to catch up. But Sampal Kami's not a power hitter. So I'm not too sure. Maybe some muddied thinking after yesterday's defeat. And they'll have it all to do because Isan Khan has had an excellent tournament. He's been really, really good. Nine wickets to his name. And yesterday, him and Yassim Mertatsa, well, oh man, couldn't hit them off the square. Nepal are going to need to find a way to score against the spinners here in the middle. Midas, a very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to everyone. It's not really going Nepal's way the last 38 hours or 36 hours, if you will. Can they turn it around now in this final 10 of the first innings as they take a quickly scampered two? Good running. Now all of a sudden, this looks like a completely different team, finding it hard to build up those partnerships at the top of the order. A shocking move by sending Sompal Kami at top of the order, not going in their favour. 
instead of sending sompal kami just wanted to know your thoughts if they could have gone with gulshan ja left hand get some quick runs yeah look he's had a, a really good time of things with the bat isn't it funny how it works in waves couldn't buy her on two months ago but he's been in good form here in oman certainly would have thought that would have made more sense to me than sompal kami at 3 it's something that uh, monty decides he used a bit in odi cricket and there you can get it if the ball's nipping around he's got a very good technique but he's not going to score quickly career strike rate in t20i cricket i think it's less than 120 113 it is in fact that's not what you want you need to be scoring at more than a run of ball in the power play you need to cash in when the going's good and being honest despite a couple of good overs from ayush shukla the ball didn't move around a huge amount wasn't like yesterday morning where things were very tough with the 10 a.m. start. Very hot day, 2:30 p.m. It's probably a bit of an indication of a general lack of confidence in the batting, maybe with the exception of Asif Sheikh, who's had a few runs, Dependra Singh Ayri and Gulshan Ja. Outside of that, there hasn't been a huge amount to cheer. A couple of first shocking things we have noted: winning the toss and opting to bat first in windy conditions. Clearly, the batter struggle against the likes of Ayush Shukla and Atik Rahman. And Sompal Kami coming at number one position, not helping the cause of the team. It's a tough road, long journey in this game. Six wickets in hand. But someone needs to fight with the bat. And even Mala, who's got that remarkable career strike rate up over 170, he looks a bit shy of confidence, doesn't he? The modern T20 game is, is so much about strike rate, particularly when the, the batting conditions are good. They generally have been. They might be slowing down a touch now. It's not about your average. It's a very quick single dashed. That really isn't something you look at too often. But if you look at the leading run scorers in the tournament, as we get to the end of the 11th, 68 for four. There's nobody from Nepal in the top 10. And that's despite the fact that many of those in the top 10 have only played the four group games. Nepal are into their sixth match now. And outside of Dependra Singh Iri, which is obviously bolstered by that incredible historic feat of hitting six sixes, there's nobody in the top 10 in terms of strike rate either from Nepal. I think they've bowled and fielded generally pretty well. They were excellent in the group stages. But a lack of runs, and particularly a lack of quick runs, has cost them. And look at that. Much more like it. Kushal Mala hits it as clean and as big as anyone. And he loves left arm spin. This is not the right matchup for Hong Kong. Big one down the ground. Uh, good to see a counter attack from Kushal Mala. The first ball of the 12th over dispatched towards that long on region. Flight offered, quickly going down. One knee connects well. A maximum, a much needed maximum. Is it back to back maximum for Mala and Nepal? Miles up in the air, no chance this time. The fielder settling Nizakat could not get the distance. Mala departs. Well, it looked like six more, didn't it, Mudasser? It was right into his favorite area. Maybe just off the bottom corner of the batter touch. Nizakat can. Very. Gratefully receives the catch, holds onto it nicely under a bit of pressure right in front of the Nepal fans that have come in today with that Australian technique. Mala, the latest to go, gone for an unlucky 13. Nepal in further trouble. 74 for 5. Flexibility continues in Nepal's order. They're not going to go with Dependra Singh Ayri, who's batted at six for most of this tournament. He's not in at seven. It's Gulshan Ja, so Ayri will, at a minimum, be number eight. I'm all for a little bit of innovation. 
and a bit of flexibility keeping the left hand right hand combination together but Irie hidden away down at eight well not for me he's been in wonderful form this tournament bat ball in the field he's been doing it all for Nepal and he may not be called upon till who knows 14th 15th 16th 17th over now surely you want to make more use of one of your big hitters Unable to digest what's happening here. Nepal, half of the side back in the hut. Got the maximum. Kushal Malla want to repeat the feat. Got hold at long on. Came into this tournament as a favorite. Nepal, but the top order could not fire for them. Straight towards the bowler. The spinner. The left arm orthodox, breaking that much needed, got that wicket. A partnership which was looking good between Sandeep and Mala. A good comeback by Yasim Murtaza in the over, going for a maximum then a wicket. Keeping things tight, going for just eight runs in his second over. 12 was done, Nepal 76 for the loss of five. A really interesting point you make there, Nepal coming into this tournament as favourites. Reigning champions, yes. Favourites for me, no. Not on the ICC T20I rankings, and nor in these conditions. I think UAE, Nepal and Oman are so tightly matched, I think it would have been hard to split any of the three of them. But were Nepal to lose today to a side ranked in the 20s to Hong Kong, fine and all, a tournament as Hong Kong have had in patches that would be a big upset mm, that would be probably of more concern losing today for me than losing yesterday UAE were exceptional yesterday they got the best of the conditions and they outplayed their opposition there wasn't much more to it and that's why I'm a little surprised by some of the decisions today if they stick with the same 11 surely you stick with the same tactics surely you, you, you wipe it out as a as a leadership group within Nepal and say look we outplayed yesterday we didn't play well enough we got the worst of the conditions, bounce back today, sticking to the game plan. That won us the four group games. So I think some of the decisions today, really hope they haven't been looking at social media because there was some, some negative comments from some of the fans and you can't win every game, you have to remember that. It's not possible in sport. It'd be no fun if you did. The despair of losing makes the joy of winning all the more tangible. And this is how the fans of uh, Asian countries are very emotional. And it's such a short tournament, things are happening so quickly, there is less time for the recovery to go and understand what went wrong. But rightly said, if they stick with the same playing 11, they should have opted to go with the same batting order as well. Someone like Anil Kumar Sa, he could have been a very good option if you want to test someone in the batting department. Pratis GC, he has been left out in that semi-final against UAE. He bowled quite well in the last league game against Saudi Arabia. But as of now, Hong Kong, China, they are in control, they are in command. Another tight over from the experienced Ahsan Khan. With the dot delivery, 13 overs done, 80 for the loss of five. Yeah, and for, for me, I know there's been lots of calls on social media for Anil Saad to get into the team. I don't think he's done enough yet to, to force his way into the T20 side. He, he may well play a little bit against the West Indies A in that five-match T20 series that will be in Kathmandu starting next week. But he's only played two times in his history that the w runs that he got and the weight of runs forced his way in in the ODI game. So if you're sticking with the same 11, the concern for me wouldn't be the lack of players in it. It's Kami at three. It's down the leg side, gets it round the corner. Not sure it's come off the bat, but either way it's going to be four. It's actually leg boys. Thought it might have been just a flick of the pad. Much needed runs. The scoreboard it needs to get going here for Nepal. Using that pace of Murtaza. The left arm orthodox is always tough to bowl to a left-hander. 
coming into the left hand and nicely managed and he knows exactly where the fielders are stationed putting it away from the reach of the final leg good start to this over tossed up and ja well he took the bait didn't he but couldn't get it out of the screws good throw had Jan a little trouble, but that was very difficult for Zishan Ali to collect. What a gun arm Nasrullah Rana has. That was like a bullet. He took a chance to Gulshan on his arm. But luckily, not collected cleanly by the wicketkeeper. Trying to go big, not connected well. And look at that throw coming in from Nasrullah. One bounce straight towards the wicketkeeper. One more time. Yes and no. Mix up. And the wicket going down. Sandeep Jora. He was sent rightly back by Gulshanja. A big mix up. Well, poor old Sandeep Jora here. There's nothing he could do. And, and you feel sorry for Gulshanja. They pushed hard for two again. The problem was Gulshanja has slipped. Jorah's dive to try and get back in. I don't think has saved him. Now he might need to see the reverse angle to make sure the bales have been broken cleanly with the ball in his hand. But Jorah clearly short, isn't he? What you might not have seen at home is that Ja turned quickly for two, but he stumbled. He ended up falling entirely. He screamed out to his partner to turn, but well, Jorah's done everything he can, but it's too late. He's gone for all money. The sixth wicket's down, and Nepal are now in all sorts of trouble. Well, I th think that's the wrong light. I'm just going to get that checked. There it is there. So it is the red light. Just a little twitch of the fingers led the... Wrong button being pressed. It will bring about the dismissal of Jorah. It's 87 for six. <laughs> Dependra Singh Iri in the best part of six overs remaining. Amazing strike rate up over 200 in this competition. Mm, you'll get off the mark with the. Oh no, it's going to be two and two. Well, you're not going to believe this. It's calamitous stuff for Nepal. Irie said yes, then he said no. The first run out was unfortunate. Well, this one, it's a howler. It's an absolute shocker. And Gulshan Jha is the latest to fall. Oh, what have you done here, Gulshan Jha? First it was Sandeep. Now, yes and no between Singh and Jha himself. Tap and straight away going for that run. Making no sense. Why give away your wicket for just a single? Excited Yasim Murtuda. Back to back wickets going down in the shape of run out for Nepal. Runner ball six. Feeling the heat under pressure. The batters of Nepal. It's 87 for the loss of seven. Karen KC, the new man to the crease, he's at the non-striker's end. Dependra Singh Iri, well, he's sold Gulshan Jha down the river there, isn't he? And now, this is a very invidious position that Nepal are in.
Irie gets off the mark with a single around the corner. End of the 14th, 88 for 7. Okay, six overs remaining. Isan Khan into his third. He'll relish this situation. Oh, it could have been number eight. It should have been all the eights on the board, but he's put it down. Nepal are rattled. They are staggering around the ring right now, sadly, for them and their fans. And Hong Kong had a golden chance to take the eighth. Going straight towards the bowler. There wasn't a chance for Isan Khan. Put down, survive. Dipendra Singh Airi. Something positive for Nepal, 89 for the loss of seven, current Casey on strike. Well, full commitment to the tender age of 39 and a smile on the face of Pat in the back too for the Pender singer. We, we heard from Monty Desai there in the, in the flash interview, really appreciate him talking to us right in the middle of a, a crunch game for his side. We heard from him talking about the cutthroat nature of the associate game as this time they will get the single. It, it really is brutal out there, but as a consequence, the players empathise with each other and, and off the field, they're all great friends. And this is the age of 39 where you want to show you are still young. You want to show everyone that you can put those extra dives. Showing full commitment is Ahsan Khan, back-to-back -back dives coming in. Sensible, sensible here. Those two runouts back to back in the previous over. Denting the hopes of Nepal to go beyond 120, 130. The likes of Sandeep who was looking good. Then Gulshanja. It all depends on this Hulk, Karan Casey and his partner Dipendra Singhairi. Batter misses, so is the wicket keeper. Yeah, by is given. I think Isan Khan's trying to make out he could have had another wicket, but here's the runouts. Let's get a look as we get to the end of the 14th. It's, I believe, 90 for 7 now. We'll get that checked. There's the first one. You can't see the slip. It's off your screens. But Gulshan Jha, well, he just fully collapsed, didn't he? And then Mertatsa, look at him. He's pumped up as the latest one goes. I believe it's 90 for 7, but we're going to need to get that check because there's a disparity at the moment with the local scoring, which says it's actually a ball to come in the over. And we're going to have a, a bit of a break in play here because... It, I was pretty sure it was five balls in the over. There's all sorts going on here with the scoring. And the umpires, I think, have just realized it too. So Isan Khan's going to have to go back and bowl the final ball of the 15th. Yeah, a little bit of confusion. We make the score 92 for seven. And so too does Crick Info. So we'll stick with that at the moment. The Home scoreboard is 87 for seven. So a little bit of everything going on here on third place playoff day. Five ball over, correctly not called. Well done to the reserve umpire for stepping in. Make sure that Nepal get their full allocation. One ball left, Mudasar. Unexpected things happening in this game. First, Nepal winning the toss and opted to bat first in the windy conditions, then sending Sompal Kami at top of the order. Back to back runouts. All taking their own time, wanted to make sure whether it was a six balls over or five. The on-field empire waiting for the confirmation from the match referee here. Yeah, I think in fairness to the umpires, what's happened is 
this often happens with a run out. You have to remember you can score runs and have a dismissal. So that they were attempting the second. They did get one. So that the home scorers were still catching up with that. They are now catching up. And here comes what will be the final ball of the 15th. They were probably deceived by what was on the board, thinking there was only one ball to go. Anyway, all's good in the end. We won't just have an extra ball. We'll have an extra two balls. That'll be a wide. Bit frustrated, bit furious, Hassan Khan. Extra legal delivery for Dipendra. Can he get a maximum here? No. It'll just be one extra run today. Pal will get us to the end of the 15th. The score across everywhere. We're all in agreement now. Happy days. 93 for 7. So what can Nepal do with the last five? I'm joined by Pranav Mehta to guide you through it now. Pranav, a, a little bit of a feeling of, a, of something of a hangover from yesterday for Nepal in particular. Very difficult to, to raise your game for what is a big contest. After the disappointment of the defeat for both of these sides yesterday. For sure, Andrew. Cannot just, just cannot be going down on your shoulders, just can't be having your head down. These are professionals and this is a big stage for them. And look at that prize, the qualification to the Emerging Cups. You can't be losing out so early. At the time, they're just trying to get something on board with which they can put up a fight. But Andrew, one thing that, ha that Nepal would be looking to consider moving ahead is the top order. They need to get somebody with that power, that all power game, something like Nasim Khushi, which can dominate that power play. Yeah, look, Kushal Bertel is a very powerful player. It's lots of sixes. Just having a lean trot, it happens. Thanks to Sebas Mungain for this stat. First 29 innings, no ducks, five in the last 13. That's cricket. That's T20 cricket in particular. You're a little bit like the death bowler in the bowling side. You're either hero or villain. You either score very quickly in the power play when the going is good, or you can be dismissed early. Still think he's a cert at the top for me as we get through a very quick over. Just four singles from it. And it will end Yassi Mertatz's spell, economical as always, excellent figures, one for 25 for him. It's 97 for seven. It does not matter where you are in this world, stay connected with, with us. You need to unlock cricket, and you can do that by downloading our app, whether on iOS or Android platforms, we are there. You can also do that by logging on to www.asiancricket.org. A lot of updates, a lot of live action, and everything relating to, related to the Asian Cricket Council. The question is, which are you on, Pranav? I, I don't know. You look like an iOS man to me. We'll gauge your reaction in a second. Five bowlers used. No sign again of Nazar Lurana, which is a surprise for me. I thought he bowled well in the penultimate over yesterday. Hasn't had his chance yet today, and I think they're going to stick with Isan Khan. And this one smashed out to deep backward square. There is Rana. No bowling for him yet. What a bullet arm he has, though. Come on, which are you on, Android or iOS? Are you on both, are you? Android, 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 all the way. Never just moved on to IS. Just got stuck. Well, it's taken eight days of the nine-day tournament. We finally agree on something. <laughs> finally. Day eight. Myself and Pranav Mehta actually agree on something. This is going to be gone, surely. It's almost a celebration appeal. 
Karen Casey got stuck deep in the crease, and Isan Khan, well, hasn't he deserved that? It's his 10th wicket of the tournament. He's as good as he's ever been. Karen Casey, plum. The lad is aging sweet. Asan Khan, what an incredible delivery. Turning a mile on this occasion. And Karan Casey, never in the mix of things. This is going to be trouble times for Nepal as Karan Casey departs for 3 of 7. 98 for the loss of 8, Nepal. Lalit Narayan Rajbanchi in at number 10. He's promoted up the order ahead of Bahara. I think was at number 10 yesterday. Problem for Nepal is picking Rajbanchi in Bahara. Not that in a T20I. It should be up to numbers 10 and 11 to make runs. It does certainly leave a little bit of a tail. No heroics from Karen KC to date. Unlike yesterday where he batted nicely. And now the problem is it's Really last chance saloon for Nepal with Dipendra Singh Ayri. May not even get past their total of 119 from yesterday. You never know. You never know with that man. Still in the mix of things. Dipendra Singh Ayri, he's a hero. He's a superman. He can do anything that's on offer. Of the outside edge and that is what will get Dipendra on strike. Yeah, don't the keel target these two balls from Isan Khan. As they were yesterday, the two spinners close to untouchable in the middle. I was actually having a chat to some of the Hong Kong team out there before the toss saying, did you not have a third spinner you could have turned to? And Babur said he couldn't remember the last time he'd bowled. He used to bowl some off breaks. This is a cat can, he bowled a few leggies. Hasn't bowled in a long time. And Anselm and Rath's bowling is all but gone. So they didn't have a third spinner to turn to. But these two, they've done the job again, haven't they? Combined figures between them of eight overs. Two for 42. Exceptional. Murtatsa and Khan, very impressive. The hundreds up, 100 for eight. Poizaz can probably come in and bowl some cutters, you'd imagine, with the way the surface has just started to wear. So I think credit to Nizakat Khan. He's, he's really learned from yesterday, and in a funny way, having bowled and fielded so well, I didn't feel particularly well, actually, having bowled so well yesterday afternoon, being asked to come and bowl again, that's slightly played to their advantage. I thought it might be a bowl first kind of day. Road Powell saw it differently, and... Wearing something miraculous from Dependra Singh Iri here. Even 120 could be a stretch from here. Big swing and a miss. Another dot ball. Pressure builds on Iri. They would believe in their bowling, wouldn't they? Hong Kong, China. With the way they bowled yesterday against Oman, almost made a game out of nothing. Defending 131. And they did push Oman to the limits. Picked up, man out there, goes over his head. Finally something 
For the few dozen Nepal fans, the tragics that have come in today, credit to them to cheer. It's that man again, it's Dependra Singh Ayri. The Superman, the Superman has continued to get things done. If you're a superhero, you shine alone and that's what Dipendra Singh Ayri has been doing here on his visit to Oman. He's been shining and he's been shining alone. Some troubled faces here from the Nepali fans. Got to give that man in the sunglasses a shout out. As Ayri slashes this away for a single that he's going to turn down. That's how much confidence he has in 10 and 11. He wants to face every ball he can. The gentleman with the Nepal flag. He had the Nepal flag for the morning game with a Nepal shirt on. Then he disappeared out to his car in the break between the games, brought back an Oman fan flag and an Oman <laughs> shirt. So he's lived here for the best part of a decade. He says he supports both countries equally. This is very stylishly driven. What a stroke for more. Incredible. Dipendra Singh Ayuri. Everything that comes out of his bat is nothing less than a gem. Strikes, strikes it clean. And a little bit to cheer for. As the Nepalese fans see their favorite superhero shining and shining bright. Dipendra Singh Ayuri, what a player. Incredible, incredible striker of the cricket ball. Has to be a single here, doesn't it? No one from Hong Kong's in saving the single. So look at that, Ayuri will just pat it out into the offside. He'll have 12 balls to work with. Can he somehow drag Nepal up to 130, 140 in a dream world? That'll give them something to defend. It's a Nelson, 1-1-1 one, one, one for eight. Nazrul Arana bowls a penultimate over again. Only bowled one yesterday, will only bowl one today. Hits the block all nicely, but he'll have a bit of pace for Ari to work with. Man in the circle at mid off. Is that where Ari will target? No, oh, goes to his favourite cut shot, misses out. Two in the deep on the off, three in the deep on the leg. Specialist bowler to be bowling the second last over. That's how Nasrul Rana plays for Hong Kong China. Just bowls that one over. They need the wicket of Dipendra Singh Ayuri, Hong Kong China. They want to conclude this very quickly. Pulled away. Now, has he found the gap? Oh, yes, he has. It's another boundary. Dependra Singh Ayuri will not stop fighting. The three-dimensional cricketer, the Tiger. Well, he's standing tall amongst the wreckage of a very difficult day. Superheroes fly alone. And that's exactly what Dipendra Singh Ayuri is doing here in Oman. At the Oman Cricket Academy. Flying solo. And he is flying that Nepalese flag all alone. What an incredible performance here. Down the track, slashed away. Straight to the man though, and he turns down the single. They almost ran halfway up, shook hands and ran back. End result to be a dot ball. Incredible, incredible from the Pindra Singh Ari. The way he's striking the ball, he would have certainly felt that if there was a little bit of support 140, 150, 160 was on the cards. Needs to bat a little higher. So often he's left alone, alone. The 
the short third comes up into the circle and long off goes back. Might have been the area where Irie would have liked to go. Ball into the block hole, almost tries to get the helicopter out. Taking the single, they won't get the second. Now, well, Raj Banshee's probably got a job to do. What will the discussion be that Dependra Singer is coming down to have with his number 10? Cannot have a big swing. Because what that does is if he misses out and he walks back, the number 11 stays exposed for, with one delivery in hand. So he needs to be smart enough to play this delivery out. A single would be ideal. Short and wide will be a wide. Just wonder would I really have been tempted to try and scamper through there. He's so quick. He would have got there, I think. Yeah, it's been a, a difficult day. Credit to Hong Kong. They've bowled well again, haven't they? Just think back to that Oman clash yesterday. Three drop catches I made it. It could have been four, depending upon how you look at it. A couple of missed run-out chances. Lucky Bilias rescued the day yet again for Oman. They've had a funny tournament, Hong Kong, haven't they? They really, by all rights, shouldn't have got through the group. But now, they could well be looking at third place. It's the seniors who've come to the party. The captain, Nazakat Khan. The powerhouse, Babur Hayat. They've stood up tall when it matters the most. And what an incredible knock that was from Babur Hayat in the final group stage match for Hong Kong, China. So Iri will be happy with the single. I think he'll try to face all six balls, come what may, in the final over. Well, he'd love another 36, but he'd take even half of that 18 and get them to 137. And it would be really thanks to Iri they've got there. 119 for eight. If you look at that batting card, it's trouble times. A lot of players got their starts, but nobody able to convert. And when your number seven, number eight batter is your top scorer, Dipendra Singh Ari, you'd want him to come in a little earlier, wouldn't you, Andrew? Yeah, big time. Two things stand out there for me. One, why is Ari at eight? And two, again, five batters getting to double figures, and no one's made more than Ari's 24. Get a start, you've got to cash in. It'll be Isaz to bowl the final. Nails the block out. Really good skills. He was exceptional yesterday, wasn't he? Three for 16 from his four overs. Wicketless today, but that's a really good start to the final over. Not one of the quickest, but certainly one of the smartest. Uses his variations to his advantage. Does have a very good slower delivery. The line length which he picks is spot on. Intelligent cricketer, as us. That'll work, that'll work. Outside edge will travel to the boundary. Any runs whatsoever, Nepal will be cheering for that. And it's all coming from the bat of Dipendra Singh Ayuri. Yeah, last man standing, isn't he? In a big way. 45 on the back and four more to the name. Was that off cutter? <laughs> Look at the amount of air. Mahendra Singh Dhoni, eat your heart out. What did he make? 28 off 8 last night or something like that. Nowhere near as many here today, understandably, but they're still roaring to the heavens. Four balls left. Oh, big swing and a miss. Don't think any contact with that. Zishan Ali is interested. Not out the decision. Three balls to go. Need a maximum here. Need a maximum. It's a desperate call for a maximum here. Can he do it? 28 of 26, he's been held on from attacking. Courtesy of those wickets falling on the other side. Now can he capitalize? Into the slot and smashed. 
Well, out of the ground. Go and find it because it's to Pendrissing Ari. Up to his heroics in the final over again. Disappointed Hong Kong fan there in the crowd. Ari is just and only just keeping Nepal in this contest. It's never a desperate times on Nepal till Ari is in the middle. You just need to demand. That's exactly what we did. Demanded a maximum. Delivering is the Pendro Singh Ari. What an incredible strike. And it's one of those tougher sides to clear the boundary. It's a big boundary and he clears it at ease. Into the slot again. Well, just look at that. That is massive. It's gone miles, clatters into the media center building that we're in. Irie, well, simply awesome. Man of crisis. Dipendra Singh Irie, colossal that is. Incredible strike right on the third year of the media center. What an incredible strike. What a time to get those runs. Nepal up to 135. Can they get across 140 with a delivery to go? Well, I'll say it one last time. How is this man batting at number eight? He's your informed player. He's rescuing Nepal here. And he's going to smash this last one away for four more. Well, the final over goes for 20. Dependra Singh Ari makes 44, not out, off 29. And all of a sudden, the game is a totally different complexion. Thanks to one man, it's the one, it's the only. It's Dependra Singh Ari. What an incredible performance from Dipendra Singh Ari, getting 44, but most importantly, batting solo. He was out of partners, he was out of recognized batters, and one-handed solo. He's got Nepal to almost around 140. Game on, isn't it, Andrew? From nowhere, it's game on. Nepal, being honest, well, they were dead and buried for much of this first innings, those consecutive runouts. Hugely costly. The first one unfortunate, the second one, well, calamitous in nature. Nothing that Jora and Ja could have done. It was just a slip, a piece of misfortune for Gulshan Ja. But the very next ball, I read, it was that sold Ja down the river to be run out for six. He's made real amends though with 44 off 29 to maybe not get them to par. We think 150, maybe 160 is what you want on this surface, but it will keep them in the hunt. If they bowl and field well, they'll always field well. If they can bowl well, it could be game on. If you're talking about the bowling card, they were spot on for majority part of this first innings, except for the final few deliveries when Dipendra Singh Hari took them apart. Ayush Shukla, definitely the bowler of the afternoon. 3 for 17 for him. Wicked apiece for Atikul Rahman, Yasem Murtaza, and Asan Khan. The spinners did pull it back for Hong Kong China, but credible finish from Dipendra Singh Ari. So that was the start. Let's look at the highlights. A little late outside edge, wasn't it? Poor old Kushal Bertels had a horror run. Duck, duck, duck. And then some runs came before, well, Sampal Kami promoted up to the order. Couldn't quite believe my eyes. I thought there was an error with our graphics at first. There was a few flourishes from Rohit Powdle who played nicely, including cashing in on a couple of free hits before Ashif Sheikh was caught by Nizakat Khan for five from 11 deliveries. And then look at that. Well, it was as plumb as they come, wasn't it? Powdle trying to work it into the leg side. It brought Jora and Mala together. Mala unleashed one monstrous one, but he tried to do the same from the next ball and he was caught out. One, to, one shot too many. That's exactly how you want to put it as. And that certainly tr started the trouble. Yes, they were trying to go. They were trying to go after the bowling at regular intervals. That's exactly where this run out came in and broke their back. This is, in my opinion, is where all the trouble started for Nepal. Yes, they were struggling prior to that, but back to back run outs. And they were in no sorts whatsoever. Yeah, they were in huge trouble there, weren't they? 70 excuse me, 87 for seven, and then that became 98 for eight with the dismissal of Karen KC. But Irie, with four fours and three sixes, has kept Nepal in this contest. Some conventional strokes, then some real power, and some quality at the end. A couple of sixes after this were two of the shots of the day. That one may be one of the shots of the tournament. Audacity at its best, and then those fast hands to get Nepal almost kicking and screaming up to 139 for eight. 
will get us to the halfway stage of our coverage. It'll be 140 to win. Remember, there's a place at the ACC Emerging Teams Cup on the line here in this third place playoff. It's a big prize getting to go and play the A sides of all those test nations. And Hong Kong, they'll need 140 to win, but it's Nepal that have taken the momentum in. Do come back and join us inside 10 minutes' time for all the action from the second innings.
It's third place playoff time here in Muscat and Hong Kong will need 140 to win to round out their campaign on a winning note and also take that critical ACC Emerging Teams Cup spot. Nepal have only got to that 139 thanks to, well, a quite sumptuous finish. Dependra Singh Iri, he's at it again, isn't he? He's hitting the headlines all around the world with that six sixes. And thanks to a stunning little cameo, 44 of 29 deliveries. Nepal of life, they have hope. By no means. But what to hear heroic innings from Dependra Singari. Andrew Leonard here with you. But I'm just keeping the seat warm for a moment. I'm going to pass over to my two good friends who will guide you through. Over to Pranav Mehta, Mudassar Ali is Yassim Mertatsi it's going to be to open the batting for Hong Kong. Thanks a lot, Andrew. And you have been our rescue rangers for the past one week, 10 days time. So match on, it was an incredible knock from Dipendra Singh Airi rescuing Nepal to start the proceedings with the ball. Current KC four matches, three wickets to his name, an economy of 7.8. In big games like this, you want your heroes to be standing up and standing up tall. And one for one final time. Nepal would want current KC to come strong and come really strong against Hong Kong China. Uh, Yasin Murtuza down the leg. Half stop, but making sure to save three runs for his team. Asif Sheikh. Not a very good start from current KC. Finally, some shape for Karan Casey. That's been missing throughout this entire tournament. And finally, there is a little bit of shape. They've got that one run, but something in positive for Nepal here. It's all about the momentum at the end of the first innings. Out of nowhere, they got 139. Lots of positive for the fast bowlers as well for the spinners of Nepal. An ordinary delivery and ordinary shot from Anshuman Rath. What current case you should realize is that Anshuman Rath hasn't been amongst the runs in this tournament and that's where he should fancy himself of picking up a good delivery, a gem of a delivery, a jaffa of a delivery that can give him a lot of confidence and suddenly he can look like a very different bowler. Uh, indeed, a lot depends on this initial overs of the second innings. Nicely bowled, well played and good piece of fielding. So overall, good piece of cricket we are witnessing in this game. But once again, showing his class in the first inning, Dipendra Singh Airi. They were in a trouble, they were in a bit of bother to bundle out below 120, but what a knock we have witnessed, Pranav. Believe it or not, Mother Sir, Andrew and I were commentating and that's where we were discussing that if Nepal gets to 120, that will be game on. And look where they, where they are, 139, courtesy of Mr. Dependable. In the air, over the top, runs and runs for Yasim Murtaza. Never look to keep it down. He's a makeshift opener and he's expressing himself on the very first delivery that he faces. First boundary for Yasim Murtaza and first boundary for Hong Kong. Two left-handers, top of the order for Hong Kong, China. A bit full and look at that class of Yasim Murtaza. Impeccable timing going over the short mid-wicket. Lightning outfield helping Murtaza and Hong Kong, China to fetch those four runs. This is exactly how you want to be batting when you're right, batting right at the top. In the shortest of formats, the T20. And this all in important and incredible tournament 
It's the men's T20 Premier Cup, the big stage. And it's also the gates. Incredible swing, incredible swing, incredible shout. It's been turned down. It's the ticket to the Asia Cup. It's the ticket to the Emerging Cup in action right now. You need to put your best foot forward. Excellent decision from Murshad Ali. That is the reason he is rated as one of the best empires in the circuit. So is Kalidas. These two men ha are having a very good time out there in the middle. Trying to get that early wicket is Karan Casey. Believe that did pitch probably just marginally outside the leg slam. That could often happen when the bowler is bowling from right. I'm over. Into the angle, into the arc. There is protection in the deep on this occasion. And with that single, it'll be over number one coming to an end. Six runs from that over of KC. Hong Kong, seven for no loss at the end of first. Sompal Gami promoted up the order today. Did get a start but not able to capitalize on it. But now he has the ball in his arm from the media center. And immediately a little bit of swaying, although it won't be very effective. As the inside part of Yasim Murtaza goes to the boundary. Incredible start from Yasim Murtaza. He's looked to express himself and he's striking it clean right now. Second boundary in this inning for Yasim Murtuza. A flick of the wrist, bowling onto his pads, asking for some serious punishment, and rightly punished by Murtuza. It's a good start to the over for Hong Kong China. But the way Yasim Murtuza is batting, I wonder why Kodze was being pushed to open the innings. Shot cut. There is protection on the offside, so no runs. Impressed with the way Asim Murtaza has started so far. Two boundaries to his name. Technically, he's a very sound batter, Yasim Murtaza. And this has been the problem of these two sides. If you talk about the top order batting, they never had that settled batting order. They always experimented in each and every game. That is the reason they struggled in the semi-final. Nepal against UAE and Hong Kong China against Oman. Goes big and finds the man. So the first wicket going down, no mistake. Jora comes to the rescue. Commentators curse. That's how we would like to put it as. Just when we were appreciating the quality of Yasim, he struck it straight to Jora. And a wonderful diving catch. Might not have required the dive, but he still put it in for precautions reasons. Don't mind it. The wonderful lush green outfield of Oman is something to be cherished about. Yasim debats, 9 of 7 for him as Hong Kong China lose their very first for 11. As I so often say, one man's loss is other man's advantage. Nizakat Khan, the captain, has walked to the middle. He's amongst the runs, 148 strike rate. And look at that average, in excess of 50. 250 is to his name already in this competition. He's the man in form. So much of batting relies on Nizakat Khan and Babar Hayat. Don't you think so, Mudasar? 
Indeed, heavily dependent on the top four, I would say. Anshuman Rath, though he's short of runs, we all know the class he has. It's only a matter of time. If he can get a couple of boundaries, he could be in a position to get you those quick runs. So it's Nizakat Khan, the captain, on strike. Nicely bowled, running hard the first run. Yes and no, but a couple of runs added to the total. What I've really felt is that Nepal in this particular tournament in the group stage haven't been tested to the way they would have wanted. They won all four. This is the wicket. Not getting the better part of his bat, Yasa Murtaza. And the class of Jora was always going to be holding on to such easier ones. Through the group stage as well, the top order wasn't tested the way Nepal would have wanted. The contributions not coming in. Yes, there were few contributions right in the middle. Sometimes it was Jora coming to the party. On most occasions, it was Dipendra Singh Airi. And those w wins, what they did is they wiped a lot of dust under the carpet. And when it came to the call final knockout games, the semi finale, all those dust that they had wiped under the carpet came to haunt them. Feels like I'm sitting next to a great poet, Mr. Pranav Mehta. In 20th century, why don't you use the vacuum cleaner? Certainly made you lose a words. Tough one there. We'll come back to that in the next Oh, Wonderful. From the meat of the bat. But no justice whatsoever to that shot. Going straight to the fielder at cover point. Two gone. 14 for one. Hong Kong, China. ACC Men's Premier Cup 2024 right here from the beautiful grounds of Oman Cricket Academy in the heart of Muscat between these picturesque Al Hajar Mountains and wonderful facilities. No two thoughts about that. Big shout out to our wonderful groundsmen here at the Oman Cricket Academy. Karun Kesi to Nazakat Khan and he's going to be watchful to start off. Does realize that Karun Kesi has a big profile. He has a lot of experience behind his back and he's looking to make an impact. Momentum in favor of Nepal. No two thoughts about that. Absolutely and the best part is the way these two bowlers are bowling. Yes, they have gone for boundary initially but good comeback. Now sticking to that wicket to wicket line, not giving much room to the batters is the key. The big wicket of Murtaza who was looking dangerous, got a couple of boundaries to his name. Shimmy down the track. This is what happens when you play too many dot balls. Charging down misses the line completely. Coming back to my question, Mother Sir, what do you think? Both these sides, they lost their all-important encounter in the semi-finale. They are playing the third place playoff match. One, they weren't tested the way they would have wanted to be in my opinion. That's where, because the group of Oman, UAE, Bahrain, I think it was the stronger group, the tougher side to qualify, where e Oman was made to sweat in the league stage on a couple of occasions. Once again, fended it away. Such was not the case for the other group where Nepal, Hong Kong, China, these were the sides there. And that's where Nepal weren't tested to the way they would have wanted. Especially keeping in mind such a short tournament, yes, you can try and test your bowling department. Starting with a spinner or with a fast bowler, you have that option to try out a couple of changes. But 
to win such kind of tournaments you always need to have one settled lineup in the batting that was the positive note for uae as well as for oman the top two batters if we talk about oman naseem kushi and prajapati they gave a good start to oman apart from one or two games and the same story goes with uae alishan sharif muhammad wasim they are in outstanding form with the bat and they always made sure to get that foundation and got those quick runs in the power play but wherein if we talk about these two sides nepal and oman till date they are struggling to find that right combination top of the order couldn't have put that better brilliant brilliant from the likes of karan kesi angling it into the right and uh, pitching and angling it away brilliant seam position brilliant seam movement brilliant showcase of skills by karan kesi and he's coming to the party way towards the end probably a little too late getting the outside part of the captain's bat no runs whatsoever in this over so far five dot balls what does nazakat have to offer with the ball to go and he'll fend it away a maiden in the power play incredible stuff from karan kesi finally he's come to be contributing nepal three overs done 14 for one Sampal Gami Brilliant brilliant bowling from Sampal Gami and better negotiated by Anshuman Rath he hasn't been in the mix of things he hasn't been with the runs but so important for Hong Kong China that he gets his better foot forward today gets a few runs behind us back and in the process what's at stake the place in the emerging nations cup so important so vital for these associate nations loud appeal and he knows nizakat khan not waiting for the confirmation from kalidas what a take from asif sompal kami strikes for the second time the credit to karan kesi for sompal kami picking up this wicket a maiden created the pressure on nazakat he faced all those six deliveries in the previous over and creating that pressure and return what happens is sompal kami gets the back of nazakat khan this is bowl this is what we mean when we say bowling and partnerships karan kesi and sompal kami what an incredible pair nazakat khan the captain of hong kong china walks back for three of nine deliveries and hong kong china are reeling at 15 for 2 they wouldn't mind if you have the likes of babur hayat in the middle they're still in the competition 250s to his name that average of 35.4 in this format is acceptable but look at the strike rate just shot of 150 in the associate region rarely there's a player who strikes the ball as clean as babur hayat he's a powerhouse releases Babrat inside edge to the wicket keeper everything is happening for Nepal here they've come in spirited courtesy of that wonderful cameo by Dipendra Singh Ayri right at the end just when Nepal was not even in the equation
if you are making Babur Hayat struggle, you are bowling a brilliant spell here. Better, much better here. Keeping him on the back foot is Sompal Kami. Slipping to position and bowling at the right channel. Inviting the batter to go for the drive. Used to be a very formidable side if you talk about the Hong Kong China. If we take you back to 2018, they were the winners of the edition of qualifiers. They went on to play Asia Cup in Dubai. Restricted India to a score of 273-74 runs. And they lost that game by a margin of just 15 or 20 runs. Magnificent 90-odd runs from the blade of Nizakat. Anshuman added 70-odd runs. Used to be very good side. Not giving much room is Sompal Kami. After that we have seen the dip in their form. Especially runs for short from the blade of Anshuman Rat Nizakat. That is where the problem started for Hong Kong China. Last year... They were the semi-finalist this year. They lost the semi-final to Oman. Just posting 130. The bowlers doing a pretty good job. But it's all about the batter, especially if it's a shorter format. You need to score those runs. Give something for your bowlers to defend. It is clearly missing from this lineup of Hong Kong. What an incredible shot. This is what we are talking about. Babar Hayat. The power of Babar Hayat. Second to none. Starting off with the maximum. And just by doing so, he just did, he just shows, showed the full face of the bat. And all the way went the ball. Class, the number 10, Babar Hayat. A bit fuller and goes over the mid-off with ease, clearing those big boundaries. And ends over with the flourish. 21 for the loss of two at the end of over number four. Karan Casey is coming in on the back of a maiden and within the arc of the left-hander he's testing the skills of the Hong Kong China batters at the moment he needs to score he needs to get those runs for his team five balls for a couple of runs what a way to get off to the mark. The previous over, a glorious shot over the mid-off for a maximum from the blade of Babar Hayat. Look at the release and the shape. He has a knack of moving ball both the ways. This time coming into Anshuman Rath. Very watchful, well managed. One thing that I have noticed is that Nepal is a brilliant bowling side and especially why I say that is because of the kind of feeling that they have to offer to their bowling. One of the standout sides, really fit, really athletic and that's what adds value to their bowling. And that's where every time they get scored somewhere around 140, 150, they look like a, a side that is in control of things. But then, when you talk about batting separately, you want to be a side that is consistently scoring 170, 180, 190, probably 200 every now and then. Flicked. Flicked well. There is protection in the deep. And it's only going to be a single. A tough job for these two, Anshuman and Babar. After losing Murtaza and Nizakat. They don't have the services of Martin Kodze. A lot depends on these two. The likes of Ezaz Khan yet to follow Zishan Ali who batted brilliantly in the semi-final getting 39 odd runs. Nasrullah is short of runs, the youngster. I think the field is busy by taking those singles, Sanchuman. 
what happens is that it, because the score line is just around 140, even though Hong Kong, China have not had the start that they would have wanted, they're still in the mix of things, they're still in the equation. If, for suppose, this score line would be somewhere around 160, 170, a start like this would wipe Hong Kong, China almost out of the equation. That's the reason you need to really bat well. And your batting side needs to come to party. I often hear that bowling side wins you championships, but I believe that it is matches that need to be won first. And for that, you need to have a really good and solid batting side. As of now, they have the edge in Nepal, 139. It's like 160, keeping in mind. They're very sharp in the field. Already we have seen the likes of Sandeep Biora taking that catch. Asif Sheikh has been brilliant behind the stumps. Got that excellent catch to get rid of Nizakat Khan. Bowling tight, not giving much room. His current case into his third over, wicketless, but not leaking too many runs. Incredible. Showing the full face of the bat, Anshuman Rath. Yes, runs have not been on offer, but he wouldn't mind that because that will build up his confidence. Five overs done, Hong Kong, China, 26 for the loss of two and fighting back. Time to unlock cricket? Download the ACC app right away. You can also visit our site www.asiancricket.org. Get a load on everything happening around Asian cricket in associate, international and all of it that's played around the globe. Alright then, Hong Kong China finding a move on from here. This partnership holds the aces for Hong Kong China. But Nepal certainly after that Impetus given by Irie in the middle towards the death overs has come back much more stronger side mentally. Lalith Rajabanshi will get the ball. He's been very economical in this tournament and has been amongst wickets as well. What an economy, a little over six. And he'll be bowling to Anshuman Rath. Just the right time to say, Andrew, a big hello to you. Very good afternoon. Really good evening, isn't it? The shallows lengthening across this beautiful ground. Been treated to a vista, haven't we, of views throughout the series. Some storm, some rain, and now much more a typical sunshine that you would see in April. Pitches just starting to wear a touch. It feels like I watched two or three overs out there from side on. A few kept low. Having said that, this square has dished out as many as 23 matches in 9 days and still playing true across two venues. Yeah, look, absolutely. And it's been a run fest over in the second oval in particular, isn't it? It really has. That's been firmly struck to long off. Just goes to show how good this wicket is still playing. I think right now it's honours even. Neither side are ahead. This third wicket partnership is key. The Pal are only in this contest, really, thanks to one man. Dependra Singh Iria at it again. Cannot understand why he was all the way down at number eight, but that's for another day. It's given them ho hope, it's given them a life. Need to defend this 140 target. And that's a good point you made, Andrew. At number eight, obviously, because Sumpal Kami too got that elevation at number three, so his batting order was dropped down. But in future, Andrew, you think. ID now deserves the promotion of the batting order. He needs more time and deliveries at his disposal. I'm a big proponent of flexibility in the modern T20 game. But there has been a lot of shuffling of the order. It's going to miss leg. Stifled appeal. And that's where what can happen is a bit of uncertainty. I don't mind if a guy is at five or six, depending if it's a left or a right hand getting out. You still know you're playing in the middle order. You still know your role at that point of the game. Sampal Kami at three today, I've said it a few times, could not get my head around it. Good enough point. A good over to start with as well. Only three coming off it. End of the power plays. It's been a fine job going Nepal's way, 29 for two.
Gulshan Kumar Jha missed out with the bat today. But a fine all-rounder, a little bit higher on the economy side. Four wickets for him. So much to offer to Nepal cricket in the coming years. What a fine talent. Nepal needs a breakthrough. Yeah, I think he's had a good tournament, Gulshan Jha. Andrew Leonard here alongside Mikhail. Oh, Mikhail, look at that. That's a lovely blazer. Where's that come from? You're not hot today. Well, this has come all the way from Mumbai. And I'm thankful to you for the kind words. That's Andrew Lennard. It's been an absolute pleasure calling cricket with you, Andrew. Your perspective into the game just helps us think of new dimensions involved in it. So it's been absolutely wonderful. Tandavad, my friend. Right back at you. Soft hands in the gap. Right, Andrew, this partnership, as you mentioned, holds the key. But who do you think is the one bowler for Nepal who can actually come out there and make the breakthroughs now? They need one or two more. Well, you could have asked me seven, eight, maybe nine different questions there. I think I'd have given you the same answer. Three words, one man. Dependra Singh Iri. I think he could be critical, and I would get him into the game sooner rather than later. I'll tell you why. Left-handed batter at the crease, Anson and Rath, who's off to a slow start. Abra Hayat, so dangerous. I get Ari into the game before the 10th. Nice change of pace and off cutter coming in. Oh yes, Dipendra Singh Ari is a freak. Jorato missing out today. But he played a very handy innings yesterday. It's a good Nepal side. For the last two games have not struck together as a unit. So important for teams to come together, particularly in knockout stages. Well, without naming names, I think a few pundits, some of our co-commentators even, have been very harsh thus far this afternoon. You don't become a bad side after one game. Yes, they were beaten yesterday, beaten by a very fine UAE team. It doesn't make you a bad team. They had the worst of the conditions yesterday, but by their own admissions, they didn't blame that. They said that we played under par, UAE deserved to win, and they congratulated them as such. In fact, I did speak with Rohit at the presentation, and I asked him, was the toss crucial? He said, that's not in a control. We don't want to think about it. They've won top four games in the league stages. They've qualified for the T20 World Cup. Clearly, they're a side that's filled with a lot of pedigree and class. What they maybe want to think about going forward is the consistency they bring in. And I have to talk, ask you another question, Andrew. That's a good shot, a couple of runs, but he got some hand on that. Jora it is. Nepal at home and Nepal outside Nepal are the two different sides, uh, Andrew. Yeah, I got asked this this morning, actually. Obviously, <laughs> the modern game, your home conditions are your home conditions. Look at India at home, look at England at home, look at Australia at home. They have fortresses for a reason because they play more often in those conditions. And some fans are saying, well, why aren't Nepal playing more away from home? The economics of it make it possible to play a lot of cricket in Nepal because of the, the fan following. Down the leg side, poor delivery, fine up in the circle, work to do for deep square leg. Anshuman is pushing for the second, this is a good run. And I'll tell you what, Hayat was struggling at the other end. Had that been a direct hit, I reckon it could have been referred upstairs. Seven gone, it's 35 for two. The discussion, Andrew, over there is maybe Babar Hai trying to explain to Anshuman they need to be careful with runs in the middle of running. I just wonder, was this a chance, the last ball of the previous over? It was really good fielding from Sampal Kami out at deep backwards square. Not just a good piece of fielding, but a good piece of match awareness. He knew that Anshuman was quick enough to get back, but Babar Hai was dawdling. Let's see if we can pull together the replay for you, because I think what happened was... 
I think Gulshan Ja absent-mindedly collected the ball in front of the stumps when Dependr Singari was behind him and maybe it could have been a run-out chance from nothing. Just like the way Lalit Rajabanshi has bowled in this competition. An economy of little over six, six wickets for him. He's bowling two of the biggest batters. I reckon something will give way, Andrew. 105 of 77. Just going to see, I'm not sure if we have the camera angle from the right end, but this was the last ball of the previous over. Whipped off his legs by Rath. Brilliant awareness from Kami. He knew the throw was going to that end. Look at Hyatt. He's in all sorts of trouble. And if Gulshan Ja had left that, I just wonder, could I really have got there, whipped the bails off, and maybe it could have been the third wicket. Would have been the big one. Now that's a good observation there, Andrew, because Irie, after that, literally was trying to tell Gulshan Jha, I was right behind you for the run out. Could that be an opportunity number three? Runs coming in singles at the moment. Nepal won't be disturbed. And the big challenge for Hong Kong, it, it is almost a little bit like Aki Bilyas yesterday. I don't think either of these two want to press the accelerator or take too much risk now because of the struggles that they've had from five down. Zishan Ali played well yesterday, but really outside of that, there hasn't been much from five through 11, is there? And they've got that really long tail. And so this partnership, it's the key one. Very nicely bowled. A quick single, direct hit. It looks like Barber is home. Quite rightly pointed out, the depth of Hong Kong China's batting has not shown any kind of resistance or runs. Kalidas Viswanathan refers that upstairs. Well, I just want to have a look at this because who's at the heart of it again? Don't know if it was Powdler or Irie with the throw, but the two of them swooped in. Direct hit always makes things interesting. The initial instinct from the reaction from the fielders, the umpire, and my first look is that he's home. It was Babur Hayat who dawdled in the previous over. Look at the way in which they feel. They hunt in packs. Just trying to load that replay up for you here. Babur Hayat doesn't look too concerned. Soft hands, gentle touch. Yes, and they took off. It was Roy Pardell at point who came in quickly. Looks like Babur was well and truly home. And he'll have to slow it down just to ascertain and get a confirmation. Yeah, pretty sure that he's home, but we'll just need a better look than that. That's come through far too quickly. Great work from Powell. Really swift. And then again, good awareness from Irie. Look at Irie here. Telling the end which to throw to and also tidying up the potential overthrow. So well home, in fact, past the stumps themselves. Always good to use the technology, which I think has been a great addition to this tournament. The officiating has been good. The use of the third umpire has been very good. In fact, the tournament as a whole, it's been cracking, isn't it? I can't think of a bad game. Absolutely, Andrew. The percentage of accuracy has enhanced with technology coming in and made this competition even more superior. Nicely played. This is good cricket. We'll only keep it to a single. Nepal are very, very alert. Inside the 30-yard circle and in the outfield as well. Another over where the boundaries have not come. A single to end the over. Babur will retain strike. It gone. It's 40 for two.
Maybe Gulshan Jada continue here. Just wonder, is, is Powell thinking about when does he get, well, two men in? Firstly, to Pendra Singh Ari, and secondly, Abhinesh Bahara. Didn't bowl yesterday, Bahara. Pulls it. I reckon he's just about keeping them. A moment a wicket falls here, that's when Ari or Bora will be introduced because the Babar Hayat threat is maybe looming large on the mind of Rohit Powell at this stage. Andrew, you have a bowler like Abhinash Bora who's had his moments in the game, but you've not played him in the last, in the semis, and now as well, you've not yet brought him till the 12th over. The reason? Yeah, certainly, well, he did play yesterday, but he didn't do anything. He, he batted very briefly at the end, and then was, you could almost see him in the field. Almost trying to catch the captain's eye. Am I going to have a bowl, Skipper? Now, why I'm asking you this question is because in T20 cricket, sometimes you need options, you need backups, you need variety. He brings in all of it, but yet he's not getting a full quota of four or even one or two overs. Yeah, and, and look, certainly he's had a pretty good tournament too. He came in probably under a little pressure, but he's been in the wickets. He's been economical for the death overs for me. That'll have to be re -bowled. That's a wide. But he's picked up a wicket in every game he's bowled in. In all four of the group games, he had seven wickets to his name, an economy rate in and around eight, which is okay at the death, particularly when you're bowling either 13, 15, 17, 19, or sometimes 14, 16, 18, 20, the four toughest overs in an innings. As Isaac Khan found out in the first innings, thanks to Dependra Singh Ayuri. I just think it, there was an air of desperation, wasn't there? They went to Bertel because they had so few runs on the board. Surely he will bowl today. Oh, he goes big. And that will go the distance as well. Very good shot in the slot. Babar Hayat will not miss out. That's the maximum. This is why I would have had Iri bowling this over. I think pace on has tended to travel today, apart from at the very top. That's a great shot. Gets it all the way for six. The man out at cover sweeper. He's quite square. He's more of a cover point sweeper than a, a deep cover. I think even if he'd been five yards to his right, it would have gone over his head. That was struck with ferocious power from Babar Hayat. Outstanding batting. And yeah, remember Bahara, player of the match, as you just said to me, in the last clash between these two teams, a three for 29. A little bit of pressure on Ja with three deliveries left in the over. Much better. Hong Kong finally get to their 50 run mark as well. It's taken them some time and trouble too. Gulshan Jha has already conceded 10 runs in his four deliveries. He did speak with the Bohar and the presentation as well and he stated that he's a situation bowler and the captain brings him in depending on the situation and he attacks or he becomes a defensive bowler depending again on where the match stands. So he has multiple roles to offer as a bowler in the side. This partnership just seems to be getting a little threatening now for Nepal. Yeah, certainly you sense if these two here are still here at the end of the 15th over, it's advantage Hong Kong. In fact, it, it could be an inexorable advantage. It could be such, they put on 35. It hasn't come overly quickly off 32 balls, but it hasn't needed to just yet because that required run rate still in check. It's under eight. Babar is still there, particularly come the 19th or 20th over. This game's going Hong Kong's way. They need a wicket, Nepal. I like the way these two batters have batted, complementing each other, rotating the strike, getting to the other end, happy taking the singles, finding the odd boundary as well. Good over this for Hong Kong, China. Nine gone, it's 52 for two. And look at that, they're almost exactly even. The only difference, Nepal had lost four at this stage, Hong Kong have lost two. You can see the, the two light blue Ws and for Nepal in the dark blue. Four they'd lost early. Big trouble, three in the power play, then one outside of it. So it was 53 for four. So they may be two runs behind, but they've got two extra wickets in hand. And now Nepal 
Well, they're going to feel like if they could split this partnership, wouldn't it be good to do it now before the drinks break? Well, Hong Kong China certainly are batting to a plan over here. Both the batters are aware. The low order hasn't been tested much and short of confidence, so it depends on how far they can take this team through. Lalit Rajabanshi, a word on him, Andrew. Raised his hand and done exceptionally well, economy and wickets. He's bowled really well. He's probably been a bit of the unsung hero for Nepal throughout this tournament, actually. I think by his own admittance, he's, he's probably been a better ODI bowler thus far in his international career than, than T20I, but he's been a bit of that just because of the amount of opportunity he's had in this format. He's starting to work it out, isn't he? Economy under seven with wickets in the mix. It's very, very good from the 25-year-old. Look, he's had to step into a role that he didn't have before because obviously Sandy Plamachani isn't around now for Nepal anymore. So it's Raj Banchi who's the premier spinner, and rightly so. I still don't know why Iri isn't bowling his full quota in most games. He's impacted every game he's played in with whatever he's done. Very well bowled again. You've got to find the right length. Is Nepal missing an extra specialist spinner? Andrew? Yeah, I think big time. I don't know, is it Mausam Dakal who needs to be given an extended run, the leg spinner? What every team wants is they want extreme pace and they want wrist spin in the modern T20 game. You want bowlers who can get it up over 140 and you can get wickets with that and then you want wrist spinners who can turn it both ways. They don't grow on trees. It takes time to develop them and invest in them. It's a young left arm wrist spinner, Tol Bahadur Thapa, I think the world of back in Nepal. Two, maybe some Dakals had a few goes with his wrist spin. It certainly feels as though you're right though, Mikhail. There is just one frontline spinner missing. The other one I really like is Surya Tamang. But Surya Tamang, just at the wrong time, just as he came into contention, has gone down with a shoulder injury. I think he should be coming back soon, but it'll probably be too late for the T20 World Cup. And he's very inexperienced at the top level, but brilliant in domestic cricket, leading wicket-taker in the PM Cup in January 31, I think he had in his nine games. Lots of left-arm spin options. Sagar Dakal's another one, very good bowler. Shahab Alam, he was superb against the Irish Wolves. Oh yes, there's a lot of variety of options and bench strength looks very good for Nepal as well. At the halfway mark, Hong Kong China require 83 runs from 60 balls, 10 gone, it's 57 for 2. A quick water break as well in this oppressive heat conditions here. It does not matter. It's an opportunity to unlock cricket. iOS or Android. Just download the app and enjoy all the live actions, live updates, lots of interviews, and everything that's around cricket from the Oman Cricket Academy and all around the world. Anything that's relating to Asian Cricket Council is all up there. And you need to stay updated. You could also do so by logging on to our website www.asiancricket.org. What do you make of it, Mikhail? Balance game? Oh, yes, at this stage, a wicket or two. For Nepal and they'll be ahead 
for the moment though Hong Kong playing cautious just about getting closer and closer to the target and then just about see a change in strategy I feel this drinks breaks may have also allowed Babur Hayat and Anshuman to re-strategize this chase the only concern is if the lower order the batting after them can close this match and get them home and that's why you can see them playing very very tentative cautious cricket not really freeing their arms not taking their chances and they will target a bowler depends when will Rohit Padal bring in maybe Abhinash Bora or Airi at the moment he's going in with his front line seamers KC, Kami, Gulshan Ja, Lalit, Rajabanshi as well. The way Babur Hayat would be thinking or seeing this chase, if I understand power hitters right, it would be five sixes in the remaining ten overs. And everything around could be in singles and doubles, and they're through. Easier said than done sitting out here, Pranav, I reckon. Five sixes is a huge ask for Babur, not because he already hit nine in one game. But yes, that's the way he'll be looking at it. No, that's exactly why I said that's how power hitters look at things. They calculate runs in terms of sixes. The difference between run and ball is just around 24, 20, 23, 24 if I have my math right. And that's where if, it, if they get five sixes, it'll be run a ball. And that's how power hitters look at things. Oh yes, he got 83 of 35 the other day against Malaysia, 9 sixes to him. That was Babar Hayat for you. He put on a show. Everybody was still recovering from the big hits and they were all clean strikes, Pranav. In any ground, those would have been sixes. That's how dangerous he can get once he's in his groove. I reckon something about this drinks break may bring about a change in his approach. What they need is the license. In that match, in that particular match, they're, they're back was against the walls, they were right out of the equation, everything was against them and it was their final opportunity to get things right and that's where he came to, came with his best performance whatsoever in this tournament and along with him it was the captain Nazakat Khan as well. Now contrasting innings here, Rath has been over cautious, you look at that strike rate of his. Pitching outside the leg probably would be signaled as leg buys, will, won't be. Well, some bat on that maybe. Then pick the slow delivery. Anshuman Rat suggesting. And then now Mr. Morshid Ali Khan realizes that that may have taken the pad and gone for a single, for a run rather. Kami has bowled well today. Amongst wickets, the two wickets that have fallen curtsy, Sumpal's brilliance with the ball. Anshuman Rath has been a little over cautious in this innings. Quite understandably, he's not been amongst runs. Look at that 20 in 23, a strike rate inside 100. Now, Babur has had to make up for that. He's also not batting his personality. Usually, 26 would be in 12, knowing Babur Hayat. But this is a plan. 12, two balls too many with the likes of Babur Hayat. Such an incredible striker of the cricket ball. Everything that comes out of his bat travels a long distance. This is up in the air. There is a fielder coming underneath it and he is going to be holding on to that. What an incredible catch, diving forward. Sompal Kami strikes for the third time. The big man Babar Haya departs. Nepal knows how big a wicket this is. Just not able to get the elevation and distance. Miss hits it, Burtel with that catch. Nepal right back in this contest and now they'll be sniffing an opportunity here. Hayat walks back for 26 in 25. Hong Kong, China lose their third. It's 60 for 3. Sompal Kami. 
getting promoted with the bat, performing with the ball. And in walks Mohammed Azaz Khan. The strike rate ever so impressive, just around 140. What a time to get Hyatt's wicket. Nepal right back in the mix. Sompal Kami, the star so far. Shot wide, cut, over point. And four runs on the very first delivery for Azaz Khan. He was never going to miss out on an opportunity like that. This is bread and butter for Azaz Khan. And that's a very poor delivery to a new batter. He just walked in and you give him something short and wide outside off. It's hello and welcome delivery. And Ezaz Khan says, thank you very much. I'll just use the pace. They are in good control of the situation at the moment, Nepal. Don't want to be missing out. Sompal Kami, three wickets to his name already. Would want to add to that tally. This equation is still within the grasp of Hong Kong China. If they bat sensibly, they get some big overs, they are through. 11 gone at 65 for 3. Azaz Khan against the spin of the Pendra Singh Airy for the very first time he's been introduced in this game. Airy so important to this Nepalese side. Not surprised here. The moment Hyatt has gone back to the dugout, Airy has been introduced into the bowling attack. The Hyatt threat to a spinner coming into him was something that was playing on the back of the mind of Rohit Padel. We did discuss that when Andrew was on comms, Pranav. It's been Irie versus most of the teams in this competition. He's a thinking bowler, thinking cricketer in total. The way he gets his bat to performance, the way he comes into bowl, the feeling he's a standout. He's a complete standout player. A total package. He's captain's go-to man, Man Friday. Cut, cut well. There is protection in the deep and will be kept down to one. 72 and 50. Anshuman, Rat still very much there. What a delivery, right underneath the bat. A special milestone here for Anshuman Rath in this particular game. Now he's got to 1,000 T20 international runs. 45 games for him. And uh, his average of something close to 25, a strike rate at a modest 110. But yes, 1,000 T20 international runs for the Southpaw. And this is poor fielding. He's been there around for Hong Kong for a while. 12 gone, 71 for 3 Hong Kong China. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
71 for 3. As Abhinash Bora comes in to strike and immediately he's treated. He's treated with disparity here. A boundary of the very first delivery. Well, he's been greeted and treated with utter disdain. Shot and wide. Anshuman Rath has been there right from the start. This is bread and butter shot for him. Slashed and slashed hard. And this is where Nepal have to be careful. They can't let this momentum shift. 65 or 47. One good over and it all changes. At the moment, Nepal need a better side of Abhinash Bora. He's one of those go-to pace bowlers towards the death for Nepal. And in this final phase, they want the best of Abhinash Bora. Oh yes, he's been amongst wickets in every game. He's walked away with the player of the match award. 3 for 29 for him against Hong Kong, China in the league stages. Very nice. Boy to talk to as well, delivering the goods for his captain. At the moment, they are just looking to deal in singles, build a partnership, get it as close as possible. This man is so quick. That throw, it came in at the speed of knots. Even caught Anshuman Rath by surprise. Dipendra Singh Airi with that throw. I'll tell you what, Rath had to hurry in the end. He took off, he was outside his crease, but look at that. There, the desperation. Very quick, very quick. He's a brilliant athlete. Dipendra Singh Harry. And look how he's made a match out of nothing. Probably just those final 10 deliveries that made the difference. You know what, I'd like to see a 100 meter dash of Airi and some of the best sprinters in Nepal. This man will really give them a go and challenge them as well. He is so quick. Nimble-footed, as you rightly pointed out, athlete is the right word for him. And a natural one, that too. Bora, can he get a wicket? Big one, big one, big one. Can he get a wicket was the ask from Mikhail. This was up in the air for a very long time. Two fielders coming across. None coming to the occasion though. Now, this was in the air for a very long time. I reckon somebody should have gone in with a dive or maybe just taken a call. Mid deep in wicket and long gone, both converging. He gets the toe end of the bat, didn't quite connect it. I felt this should have at least seen an effort. It falls right in between the two of them. Malla there. For sure. Believe at least a dive is what it deserved. Although. In the hindsight, 13 was gone, 80 for 3, Hong Kong, China. Sixty or forty-two. Want to believe it's advantage Hong Kong China at this stage. They have wickets. I read to continue. What do you do when you're on Shaman Rath? Twenty-seven of thirty is never got going. Do you go for the equation? Hold on. Look how quick. Look at the recovery. Now long gone had some ground to cover. IV says, don't bother, I'll take care of it. It's so important to be a perfect athlete. So many in this world. And it's a, such a big advantage to your gameplay. This will be an interesting over. Nice delivery underneath the bat yet again. He does it time and again. Anshuman Rath needs to get going. 28 of 31 for him. He is against the quality of Dipendra Singh Airi. 
Dancing down the wicket, over covers. This is probably one of the short of the days for Anshuman Rath. And it's an important time to get it. They were struggling, Hong Kong, China. Boundaries were hard to find by, and that's when Anshuman Rath striking one of the better bowlers of Nepal. Deepindra Singh Airi over covers, no chance whatsoever for anybody. 32 of 32. And rotating the strike, running hard, they're pushing for the second. Yes, yes, no, no. And no, it is. Seven runs of the over so far. Dipendra Singh Airi won't mind it. Is that a catch? Is that a catch? Is that a catch? Ezaz is shocked. It is only the class of Dipendra Singh Airi that could have made it to that catch. And he was exactly behind it. Bowling first to start off. And diving way forward. Ezaz is walking. And what an incredible effort. Diving in front. Dipendra Singh Airi. This is bread and butter for Dipendra Singh Airi. Incredible athlete. And he's at the back of Mohammed Ezaz Khan. Just when things were looking to get settled for Hong Kong China. Mohammed Ezaz Khan is going to be walking back. And it's trouble times as Hong Kong, China reel down to 87 for the loss of four. It's an ill-biter here at the Oman Cricket Academy, Men's T20 Premier Cup 2024. This is the third place playoff match between Hong Kong, China and Nepal. One more. And the prize, prize, prize. You win and you make and you get your ticket to the Emerging Cup. You lose, you don't get anything. So everything to play for in these remaining six overs and along me my dear friend or just like I like to call him Muri Mudassar Sompal Kami sliding down the leg side will be declared as wide what a spell Got those couple of wickets in the power play, then came back to bowl his third over. Got the big wicket of Babar Hayat. Now he'll be eyeing to get rid of Anshuman Rath. Runner ball 33. Short of format, technically very sound batter, but this has been the problem. The strike rate for Anshuman. Yes and no. Need a direct hit. Lightning quick. First it was Irie, then what a backup from the bowler himself, putting that all effort. He knows the importance of each and every run here. Look at that backup. If we get a chance to see the backup, the bowler has just delivered the ball. And it is Dipendra Singh Irie. Look at the way he's charged all the way across, full stretch dive to make sure that there are no extras. Sompal Kami, incredible athlete, just like most of these Nepalese players are. Very, very good drive through the covers. This will take a stopping and it's not going to be Karan Casey on this occasion. Average effort from Karan Casey, trying to show some football skills. But this is the cricket ground of the Oman Cricket Academy and it's not going to do its best. Shifting the gaze at the right time, Anshuman Rath. Impeccable timing and finding the gap going through the offside. A much needed boundary, the equation coming down to 48, need of 34 balls.
Strike, strike, struck, 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 clean, clean, almost a six. Yes, it is a six. Anshuman Rath, he's taken a liking of Sompal Kami. What an incredible strike. He's shift gears, gear number one to gear number six immediately. A brave enough here that he is targeting one of the best bowlers of the game. Sompal Kami, not afraid to go big. Not connected quite well, not was not in a comfortable position but what matters are the six runs a maximum for Anshuman Rath and more runs for Hong Kong China Anshuman Rath he's been devastatingly good in the last few deliveries that he's faced three or four boundaries in the last few deliveries devastatingly good and on this occasion, he's going to grind it down the ground to get off strike. Counter-attack that to Pranav against uh, someone like Sompal Kami who has got those three wickets up his sleeves. Now, it will be Zeeshan Ali, the man who got those bulk of the runs in the semi-final. The wicket keeper batter. 41 needed of 32 balls. A bit under pressure. Sompal Kami. into the pads there is a big appeal and this is going to be a run out we were talking about his athleticism just prior previously in this over and on this occasion showing exactly how good a fielder he is off his own rolling Zishan Ali was a little worried about the LBW appeal and that's when the confusion has taken an advantage by Nepal look at the, what a terrific effort not looking at the ball and then comes the Superman what an effort it reminds me of 1992 John T. Rhodes it's Sompal Kami from Nepal getting better off with Zishan Ali. Came in, said hi, hello, and walks back. It is a keeper who is going to be walking back, Zishan Ali. And he's not troubled the scorers whatsoever. Half side down for Hong Kong, China, just short of 100. Sampal Kami. It's a man who's just walked into the side. Adit Guravara. And he'll start off with a dot ball. 15 overs gone. One shot of 100 Hong Kong China for the loss of half their side. This is what happened in the previous over. Leak some runs, but what matters is this effort coming in from Sompal Kami. A full length dive, good pick up and throw. No chance for Zishan Ali. Running between the wickets has been ordinary throughout this game. We have seen a couple of runouts in the first innings now. Zishan Ali. Someone needs to give that support to Anshuman. Feeling the heat. Adit Goravara, the new batter. Some positive for Hong Kong China. Anshuman Rath still out there in the middle. Things are becoming quite interesting here. A low full toss. They're down the ground for just a single. The right time to introduce my co-commentator. With that single, Hong Kong China moves to 100 for the loss of 5 and in comes. The gentleman who was looking a bit worried. Mr. Andrew Linod is back in the house. Welcome Andrew. Well, what an incredible finish we've got in our hands here. The 100 has come up here, spot on. Mudasser, Kanan Simonrath. Well, it's all on him, isn't it, really? Might get a bit of support from the youngster into the team. But it's not going to be easy. Dependra Singh Iris, two overs will be important. And then who's going to bowl the other ones? That's the big question, Mudasser. He's 
finally fumbled. And that caught and bowled was brilliant as too was the fielding off his own bowling from Sampal Kami, sensational. And look at Iris, furious with himself, burst through his hands. Somehow if they're going to defend this target, they need some special efforts in the field and we have already seen the likes of Iri, the likes of Sampal Kami, they're terrific in the field. Trying to take on Airi, look at that effort. It's not easy to take on Dripendra Singh Airi, what an effort. Well, how can you not love this man? He's just brilliant to watch. He's such a live wire, isn't he? Can't think of another bowler that would have got there off his own bowling. Sprawls to the turf, another run saved. I'm just going to be a single. And I believe we're getting down pitch side to get some immediate reaction with Mikhail Vaswani. Right, interesting situation this game is right now positioned at. Hong Kong, China need a little over 35 runs in around 24 to 25 deliveries. Half the side back in the dugout. Open Anshuman Rath still in the middle. I have Babar Ayat with me, who played a fine innings but has just had to come out because he got caught in the deep. Babar, how do you view this situation? Still want to believe you are in an advantageous stage? I think the way Anshuman been playing uh, and the playing, I think his role is to just take the game deep as uh, deep as possible, you know. And then we have a striker coming out at the end and then finish the game off. I think so far we he he been doing so uh, brilliant for us. I think it's uh, at the moment we looking ahead of the game. Babar against Malaysia, we saw you hitting nine sixes, 83 and 35 deliveries. Today it was the contrasting innings, 25 and 26. You were with Anshuman Rath. What was the discussion? We saw a rather more cautious approach between y'all. I think we just wanted not to lose uh, early wicket as we lost a uh, quick two wickets at the beginning. So we wanted to build a partnership, uh, you know, and then take it from there. I think we had a little partnership, but we didn't capitalize on that, especially myself, you know, giving away my wicket in a crucial time. Right. What do you make of the wicket? Tricky or it's good for batting? You can play through the line. I think if you bat through the line, it's good, you know, just play. If you play across the line, because the ball was just keeping a little low and gripping as well, so, you know. So I think playing through the line is a good option. Right, a lot at stake in this game, I hope you know, because if you win this, you finish third firstly and you also get an opportunity to be part of the emerging team's Asia Cup that is happening later this year. When we come to the depth of your batting now, the remaining batters to come, you're pretty sure that the boys can go out and close out this 30-odd runs? I think, as you said about the emerging cup, uh, you know, it's... For us, you know, it's an achievement for us. We didn't qualify in the last two tournaments, so we obviously wanted to, to qualify for the Asia Cup, but that didn't happen. So our plan is to just uh, go there and enjoy ourselves and get qualification for the uh, Emerging Cup. And I think we have depth in uh, our batting line. We, have, we know the guys are very capable of doing it. Right, and, and just coming back to the overall tournament and the way it went, uh, certainly, you know, it's been a stop and start affair for you. Nevertheless, good luck in this game. Hopefully, I'll be meeting you again with you being victorious. Nevertheless, thank you for your time and all the very best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a right. That was uh, Babar Hayat, uh, one of the players from Hong Kong, China. It's back to the commentators. Okay, many thanks. Good to hear from Babar Hayat. 30 to win off 22. We missed the 50. 50 mark for Ansem and Rath. And he is really guiding this chase. He's the key. Bahara, immediate pressure on him. It was a maximum from the first ball of the over. You probably saw that in the background. It's a fourth T20 I-50 for Anshaman Rath. Probably the best innings in his T20 I career. Can he guide Hong Kong home? What matters is, can he win the game for his side? 54 of 43 balls unbeaten with the help of a couple of maximum three fours and the strike rate looks quite good here 125 the story remains the same can we see Abhinash make a comeback after going for that maximum in this over the very first ball has been sent towards the deep mid wicket nails the block out but Adit does enough because a single is what his role is if he gets a single from every remaining delivery he faces I think Ansem Manrath will guide Hong Kong home. Bahara, he needs to pull it out of the fire here. This is his role. This is his job, bowling the death overs. They need the big wicket of Rath. 28 of 20 balls. A bit under pressure is Abhinash. A shot upon it toward the leg side for Anshu Manrath. Will he target towards the deep mid wicket? A nicely bowled, rolling his fingers. A fuller delivery, well managed by... Rath going for that second chance for a run out here. But lightning quick is Adit. 
and Anshuman Rath. I tell you, that's a great result, isn't it, for Hong Kong. Nails the Yorker, Abhinesh Bahara, but he still gets back for two. Rath is almost out in his feet, isn't he? His stamina, his endurance, his fitness being tested here. He's played brilliantly well, the left-hander. A little reminiscent of yesterday's innings at the top from Alishan Sharafu. Nepal simply have to get him out. They need him out now. All comes down to this. Who will it be for third? Nails the block hole again. It'll just be a single this time, but it's 11 from the over. Rath will keep the strike. It's advantage Hong Kong. It's 1-1-5 for five. And uh, look at the bowling card. They do have the options of Karan Casey, one over left Lalit Nara and Raj Banshi. And Dipendra Singh Iri. So I think the 18th will hold by Dipendra, then Lalit. Then they have that option to defend those runs in the final over Karan Casey. I tell you what I'd do. I'd bowl Raj Banshi now. Bahara the 19th. And then I'd bowl Dipendra Singh Iri. It's been his tournament, the 20th. I think you have to get Raj Banshi into the game now. You can't ask him to bowl the 20th, particularly with a left-hander at the crease. And right now, show us the cap. And right now, that's the discussion they're having. Is it going to be Raj Banshi? Is it going to be Dependra Singh Iri? The problem now is, does that mean Raj Banshi has to bowl the 20th? Or maybe are they saying, because it's Rath on strike, we'll take our chances, hopefully get him out or get him off strike, and maybe Raj Banshi can change ends, bowl the 19th. And, and, and I do understand, top of that, he's in a flow, he's in a spell where he's bowling all those tight line and lengths. That might be the reason captain persisting with Dipendra, it's Anshuman on strike. Don't agree. I think for me, Raj Banshi had to bowl this over. Had to. He's clever against left-handers. You don't think of left-arm spin being a good matchup to left-handers. But I don't think you can bowl him the 20th. So unless he bowls the 19th, then it'll be a change of ends for Raj Banshi, change of ends for Bahara. But I think I really, like you said, he's in the flow. He just he almost couldn't take the ball out of his hands. Low full toss. Hit away. Man out there. Goes left of him. And it goes all the way. And it's the youngster. 22 years of age who's changed this game. In for his first game of the tournament. Big moment. Got a chance and he's making a difference out there in the middle. A poor and ordinary delivery. A full toss. Nicely managed by Adit Goravara. A much needed maximum. That two against someone like Dipendra Singh Iri. The equation now coming down to 18 of 16 balls. Full, straight, gone. It's six and out. He strikes back. Is it too late? The Nepal, they just don't know when they're beaten. They keep fighting. It's Iri again. Runs, wickets, catches, run outs. He does it all. It's not over till it's over. A much better delivery compared to the previous one. A bit fuller. Misses the line completely. Thought of that single. A good decision from Kalidas. A short stay and all important nine runs added by Adit Goravara. Hong Kong, China still in the hunt. 122 for the loss of six. Nazrul Arana at number eight. There's not a lot to come after this. That's the challenge for Hong Kong. But Rath is still there and he's on strike. Two big deliveries, these two. Could I re impact the contest again? I think for Nepal to win, one of these two deliveries has to produce the wicket of Rath. Animated is Nizakat Khan. Onto the bats, nicely managed, not at all in a hurry against it. Depend this is the advantage, they have got that maximum early in this over. Now taking those singles. 
left with only a couple of options after this karan kesi has one over left up his sleeve so is lalit rajbanshi he needs to get a wicket here fall into the block hole ori gets a dot to keep nepal alive but only just surely this is rath's game to win it's 16 to win off 12 it's 1 2 4 for 6 well here's the equation there's two overs left it's 16 to win looks as though bahar is going to bowl the 19th mudasser who's going to bowl the 20th i have no idea oh, looking at that bowling card i think it would be current case he just couple of overs for gulshan kumar ja going for 18 runs wicketless they're opting to go with abhinash bohra for this 19th over i believe 124 for the loss of 6 inside edge oh that's so unlucky and it's going to squirt away all the way for four nails the block hole rath gets lucky but he gets enough he's earned that luck still out there in the middle batting like a warrior for his team anshuman rath some lucky runs nicely bowled somehow he manages to put that wood on to the ball going past that fine leg field a lightning quick outfield helping rath and hong kong china to fetch that boundary an all important boundary you have to take the pace off it's the one thing i don't think nepal have done well in this second half rajbanshi might be left with an over to spare the wickets are getting tired he has to go to a cutter here of some kind surely said he goes pace on gets away with it not quite into the block hole hong kong they're doing this comfortably can they hold their nerve 11 to win off 10 and sometimes how cruel is this format undefeated throughout the league games and all of a sudden lost that semi final now looking a trouble kind of a situation can he be the rescue ranger abinash can he get a wicket here turns into a low full toss that's more difficult to get away sometimes does enough rana just need singles Rath he'll be looking at these three balls and saying one boundary a four or a six and that will put Hong Kong more than enough in front to guide at home in the final I still don't know who's bowling the 20th over if we get there the drama continues here at Oman Cricket Academy playing for the third position Nepal and Hong Kong China battling out here a 10 needed of 9 is Anshuman on strike again in the block hole the last few overs we have seen they got that early boundaries that made them not to go for those big shots in the toe over got that boundary on the very first ball then happy by taking those singles or taking the strike two massive balls massive deliveries these two bahara has to give the man who bowls the 20th a chance can't afford more than one or two from these two wicket would be ideal Well a dot to start with good bowling gets it in the block hole again not too sure about the shot 9 to win off 7 this ball even bigger now it's like a gold dust every dot delivery trying to be innovative misses the line completely good take by the wicket keeper standing up to the stumps asif sheikh can he end this over without conceding a boundary can nasrullah find a boundary inside edge squirts away for a single that's not a bad result for nepal nasrullah will have the strike it's going to be 8 to win off 6 who's going to bowl it i can only imagine it's 132 for 6 so who do you turn to do you go karen kc do you go raj banchi Do you go to a wild card a seventh bowler always a good idea you have got your answer so he is on screen lalit rajbanshi the bowling all important final over eight runs to defend the good news for nepal 
it will be Nasrullah on strike. Waiting for Hong Kong, China. The good news, Anshuman Rath still out there in the middle. Can't imagine this was plan A. I think they've stumbled into this by accident. Raj Banshee's a fine bowler. He's only gone for 13. It's eight to win off six. Edged. It's going to be edged away. Can Kami cut it off? No, he can't. Perfect start for Hong Kong. They need less than a run of ball. The story remains the same. For the last few overs, the first ball going for the boundary, making room. Then all important four runs. Cut hard. Thick outside edge. No chance. Lucky runs. Well, you got a feel for Raj Banshi. It was nicely bowled. He's deceived the batter with the edge. Well, it's put Nepal on life support. They need a miracle now. Hong Kong just need one boundary. Any boundary will do for a famous victory. Goes a long way into the sky. Goes over the head of Irie. He's quick. Can he cut it off? Of course he can, but they're going to get two more. And they're only two away now. Rath might not hit the winning runs. It might be Rana. But Hong Kong can sense victory. Out of nowhere, Hong Kong, China, just a couple of runs needed in four balls. Bulk of the runs came from the blade of Anshuman Rath, but what matters are all important. Six runs in this over. Nasrullah, can he be the hero here? Waiting for Nepal. Four balls, can he get a wicket here? He needs to get a wicket. Nasrullah looking good, quick nine of just seven balls. Now an extra man comes into the circle to save the single. Powdle says to fine leg to mid wicket, to backward point, you've got to save one. We have to gamble to try and pull this out of the fire. Two to win. Goes a long way into the sky. Kushal Bertel comes in. He can't get there. Neither can Kushal Mala. And Hong Kong take victory. Rat roars in celebration. It's consecutive defeats for Nepal, and it's Hong Kong who seal that ACC Emerging Teams Cup spot. And you can't help but say they've deserved it. It's a four-wicket win. A broad smile from the veteran Isan Khan. Rath the hero, but Rana hits the winning runs. What a contest we've had in the fading light as Hong Kong, they take third. What a turnaround in this game. The men in red getting better off men in blue. And heartbreak for Nepal. And Nizakat Khan, the captain, applauding the efforts put in by Anshuman Rath at the right time, scoring those big runs for his team. And Hong Kong, China, they'll be the part of the upcoming Emerging Cup. Uh, good to see shake of hands between both the parties, but we have witnessed one of the best encounters in this tournament. Yeah, an absolute thriller. It ebbed and it flowed, and Nepal were nowhere really till the heroics of Dependra Singh Iri. He somehow kept them in this contest. Being honest, they were under par again today, particularly their batting. And then the class of Ansem and Rath had told, I think his best innings in T20I cricket, 65 off 50, bit of support from Babur Hyatt, and look at the delight for Hong Kong. They don't get nearly as many playing opportunities as Nepal, and that's why there's such jubilation. It's the fifth time they've beaten Nepal in T20I cricket. I don't think any have come bigger than this one. Marvellous effort from them to show such resilience. They lost two in the group stage as they scrambled through, really, thanks to some help from Saudi Arabia, who looked very good for second for much of the group stage. But they've managed to not just get through but then also get third. To be honest, they easily could have been in the final. I thought they deserved to win yesterday, despite Aki Bilyas's heroics. And that's the tale of the tape. Today it's Rath, the hero. And Nepal, well, despite a fine fielding and a fine bowling effort, they just couldn't do enough. A little unfortunate at the end, but I'm not sure it was plan A to bowl Raj Banshi the 20th. It can't have been. And he was unlucky at the death, but Hong Kong, the heroes, they've deserved every moment of this victory. Good fort knock from Anshuman Rath, making sure that Hong Kong takes the third place. And talking about the bowling department, Karan Casey bowled quite well, going for 11 runs in his three overs, wicketless. But it was the Sompal Kami who had a wonderful day with the ball, four overs, 33, three wickets to his name. 
but it wasn't enough for Nepal to win this game. Couple of wickets for Singh Airi and six wickets going down and it just took 19.3 overs for Hong Kong China to go past that 139. Yeah, and Karen KC will be wondering why wasn't he given his fourth? I thought that would have made more sense to go there for the 20th. But really, Raj Banshi should never have had an over left. He bowled three for 11. So he should have come back, or three for 13 it was, wasn't it? And he was given the invidious task. I thought Irie was exceptional again. Let's get a look at the highlights. And look at the best of this chase. Problem for Nepal, there was a few too many boundaries, wasn't there? Ansi Rath and Yasin Mertatsa picked up plenty of fluent strokes. The two left-handers working together at the top before Rath Excuse me, Murtaza was dismissed with a good catch from Sundeep Jora. And then Nizakat Khan, that was a big one. Sampal Kami stood up in a big way today with three wickets. But he too was hit for a few runs. Barbara Hayat hit two monstrous sixes. But then he was dismissed, caught by Kushal Bertel, who's so effective in the deep. And the runs kept coming, and Ansem and Rath played a gem of a knock. 140, and it was all about those small, small partnership between the batters. What a good looking catch taken by Singh. And at this stage, Nepal, we thought they are back in the hunt, but they were troubled by this man, Anshuman Rath. He took on Sompal Kami going for max and effort. Then this happened. What a super effort coming in to get rid of Fuzishan Ali. Then it was all up to Anshuman Rath to get those runs. But yet again, the change, Adit getting all important max against Singh. That was a big moment, wasn't it? That six. You felt that. That just swung the, mo the momentum inexorably in favour of Hong Kong. And Rajbanshi was unlucky. Don't think you can blame him. Even this easily could have gone to hand. But it just fell out of reach of the two Kushals. Neither could get there. Hong Kong ecstatic as the sun sets across this beautiful ground. It's going to wrap up our coverage from the commentary box. Mikhail Vaswani will be with the post-match presentation. Suspect Ansem and Rath will be in the mix for the player of the match award. Although Ayush Shukla was exceptional too. And it's going to wrap up our coverage from up here. What a brilliant contest we've been treated to. It's the last one before a Super Sunday finish tomorrow where UAE and Oman, the two Gulf Galacticos, will take each other on in what should be an absolute cracker. Hong Kong, they win the match by four wickets.
Hello, good evening and welcome to the post-match presentation ceremony of the third place playoff match between Nepal and Hong Kong, China. Before we proceed, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Oman Cricket Association and the Asian Cricket Council for dishing out such a lovely tournament. You've had some wonderful moments. At the same time, we would also like to thank our official streaming partner India, Fancode, official broadcast partner Nepal, Kantipur TV, official partners Dafa News, 1xBat, Babu88 Sports and commercial partner TCM. Well, fair to say we saw two sides who did really well through the league stages and finally it boiled down to the third place finish and it's Hong Kong China who prevailed by four wickets. Nepal did so well in the league stages but they missed out on two big games and that's why they'll miss out on that big berth as well in the emerging team the Asia Cup that happens later this year. Nevertheless, Nepal managed 139 for 8 in their 20 overs and Hong Kong China got there with six, four wickets in hand and three balls to spare. Certainly, it was a close game, but Hong Kong China prevailed in a tense finish. Just the right time to have a chat with both the captains. I'd like to firstly call upon the captain that came second, Rohit Padel from Nepal, for a quick chat. Rohit, tough luck. I'm sure you'll reflect back and look at a lot of moments where you could have done well. But if there's one area that you look, look at and go back to Nepal saying we need to work on, what would be that? Uh, especially if you if you see our our strength as a batting unit, uh, we have done uh, very well in last one year, one and a half year. So I think as a batting unit, we didn't step uh, well in this tournament, especially uh, throughout the tournament, I would say. Um, uh, so yeah, we'll we'll reflect that. Today we saw a little bit of an experimentation change. Sompal Kami coming in at number three. What was the plan behind it? I yeah, just wanted to um, fa just uh, he wanted to use the power play, especially. Uh, so he went up. That was the reason. Right. Dipendra Singh Airi has had a dream tournament. Uh, he's been one of the uh, top run getters, top wicket takers as well for Nepal. In terms of his batting, you feel maybe he could get a promotion in the coming matches, and or you feel that number seven, number eight, number six is the right place for him. Yeah, I think uh, we we have played him for last one and a half year as a finisher for us, and especially it had worked. And in this series, I would say it didn't work. Anything uh, didn't work uh, as for this uh, this series, especially. So yeah, he's he's a finisher for us. What are the positives, uh, Rohit, you take from this tournament? Yeah, uh, DP Dice inning uh, was a positive for us. Uh, bowlers, uh, Avnas, they did well uh, throughout the tournament. So yeah, th these are the positives. Cricket is a funny game, right? You're all top, you're all with the first team to make it to the semis, winning all four league matches. You lost one important match and everything changes. Yeah, absolutely. You never know what happens uh, in cricket, especially in T20 cricket. Uh, so, yeah. But I must admit, you all have been one of the best sides on display. We've enjoyed watching you all. Tough luck for not making it to the finals and the emerging. But I'm sure you'll have a lot of quality and pedigree that you can do much more in the coming years. Good luck and all the very best. Thank you, thank you. Right, captain of the Nepal team there, Rohit Pawdal, lending his views. Time to call upon... The winning captain, Nizakat Khan of Hong Kong, China. Wow, you are delighted, I'm sure. I saw that hug that you gave to Anshi Rat. This was a very good win, important one. Certainly will help your confidence, uh, Nizakat. Yes, obviously, you know, it, it's a massive win. And I would say that, you know, we have uh, done really well in this tournament. You know, uh, I'm very happy with my boys. I'm very proud of them, the way they have performed uh, in this uh, tournament. We stick together, we, we stay calm, and we have a belief that, you know, we can do it. Right. Usually when you win, you don't look at the grey areas, but always in a win also you'd want to improve upon a certain areas. What could be that after this win that you think you need to work on? Yeah, I think in uh, uh, batting, uh, I'm not going to talk about bowling because I think we bowl phenomenally well today. Uh, not just today, yesterday as well. Yesterday as well. So overall, you know, we, we are showing improvement uh, and uh, the thing is that uh, in our batting, you know, when we chase this low, low total, I think the first six overs are crucial. And today, I think we were a little bit lack on that. But, you know, credit goes to Anshuman. He carried his bat all the way. So, yeah, you know, it was a collective team effort and I'm really proud of my team. Right. Uh, at the halfway stage, uh, you reckon you were very confident that uh, 140 could be chased? Well, I have, I have a belief, you know, I had all, always a belief that, you know, when Anchi is in there, we can easily win this game. So, you know, he took responsibility today as a senior player and that's what we wanted from our senior players to make sure that when you're in, you go all the way. So you'll have qualified as the number three team for the emerging teams Asia Cup later this year. I'm sure you'll want to put up a much better performance there as well. Yes, you know, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful to my almighty, you know, uh, and of course credit goes to the boys, especially the coaches, you know, they have put a very hard work uh, with us, you know, and even our man management staff, you know, back in Hong Kong, we had lots of support, lots of messages. So, you know, this is a, a, a big achievement for us, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, we are looking forward to emerging tournament. It's, it's going to be a big tournament. And we are looking forward to you all as well in the tournament. You all have played very good cricket. You've had a stop and start tournament 
tournament, but you all have hung in there and you all have put up some fine performances. Congratulations, well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Captain of Hong Kong, China, Nizakat Khan. Time to call upon the player of the match, but before that, we'd like to call upon our match referee, Mr. Salim Shahid. He'll be giving away the player of the match medallion. Mr. Salim Shahid, if you could come over. Thank you very much. Quite a few performances today. We had uh, some wonderful bowling efforts by Ayush Shukla. He got 3 for 17. He was the reason why Nepal went onto the back foot. Dipendra Singh Airi with the bat got 44 unbeaten runs, two wickets as well. Sumpal Kami got 3 for 33. But there was one man who stood tall, anchored the chase, and showed what experience can bring to the table. Anshuman Rath, fabulous innings, 65 not out and 50 deliveries, 4-4s four and 2-6s, walks away with a player of the match award in a must-win encounter and powered Hong Kong China to the emerging team's Asia Cup later this year. What a fine innings, um, innings laced with maturity and responsibility. Anshuman, I'm sure you'll breathe a sigh of relief because all through this tournament you knew you could do it but you were just not being able to convert it. Yeah, you know, T20 cricket is uh, very hit and miss, you know, you kind of have to take your chances. Um, I've got a couple of starts and seeing how the wicket uh, deteriorated towards the back end of this tournament, I knew that, you know, with 140 to chase wickets in hand or having a set batsman in like what Akibilias did to us yesterday would have, would have been vital. Right, somebody had to st start and stay till the end, exactly what happened yesterday as well. Was that playing in the back of their mind that you need to be till the very end because you carried your bat through? Yeah, 100%. I think, uh, you know, the Nepalis never give up, you know, they go right to the wire. So I knew that having new batsmen, it's not easy to get going on this wicket. So I knew that if you, if you were set, it's much easier. So I think it was important for me to stay back. What was the discussion with Babar when you both were in the middle? Because that partnership looked a little out of your both personalities because both of you all are naturally aggressive, but there was a completely different approach. Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, that new baller was gripping a little, so we just said, let's bide our time and not lose any wickets. We lost two wickets quite early, so we knew that if we just spent some time in the wicket, um, you know, it would be easier towards the back end. You know, luckily, I could stay and, um, and then bring it home. Well, you've been a match winner for your side today. You've powered them into the emerging team's Asia Cup later this year. You've played a fine knock, and we've all enjoyed watching you. You've been very good on the ice. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anshuman Radde, the player of the match in this fixture against Nepal. What an innings he played. 65 unbeaten runs in 50 deliveries with 4-4s four and 2-6s. Well, we finished with 23 matches. Just one big match left, the big final. And that's lined up tomorrow. It's going to be Oman versus UAE at this very venue. The Oman Cricket Academy, Turf 1, 2.30pm local time. We are all looking forward to it and we are looking forward to your company as well. For now though, from all of us here in the presentation party, it's goodbye.